You're watching the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. Now it's time for the Brandon Austin Show. Oh, now today you guys want a list of uh, topics? I mean, wait, we walk in here. I don't even know what's going on in the show, Hamby says. We do a list of topics yesterday before the show. We get to about three of them. Mm-hmm. You say you're putting a ban on sending the group text topics if we're not going to talk about them. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hamby I'm sends done. us like four different topics today on top of the ones we already have from yesterday. Mm-hmm. And then he says, what are we putting in the show? That's our production meeting for the day, folks. And wh- who needs topics when we got Coach Ripley? Yeah, for sure, man. Really uh, kind of the unsung hero of the show yesterday, I He feel was. Like. Yeah, and that was a carryover question. Maybe we've got to put him more at the higher on the list. Surprised he doesn't have something waiting for us in the chat right now. Yeah, he'll be here. Uh, not only that, uh, he calls out the other station this morning as copycatters. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. Listen, We're, are we going to war now? What, what nah, are we doing? there's no reason to go to war. It's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the beast. We've taught those guys a lot over the last handful of years. Okay. <laughs> Is this on Twitter? I guess I got to go in deeper here. Uh, yes, it's on Twitter. Okay. I know you use that occasionally. Well, hey, man, <laughs> I have busy mornings. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time for beef. Uh, I do not have busy mornings. I got you. Well, good workout today? Fantastic workout, Brent. Give, yeah. us, a, give us a landscape of the UFC right now. Okay. Um, Just in general got? as a business? Well, yeah, no, right now, like April, like this month. What do we got? We got your big fight coming up in oh, Vegas, I mean, April 27th. Yeah, you have UFC 300 coming up here in like two weeks now. Is that the Miami one? Or is no. That the Vegas one? Oh, Brent, the Miami one was a, a Miami couple was weeks ago. Miami was 299. Yeah, yeah. 300 um, is billed as the biggest card of all time. All time! Some would say that's correct. debatable, but there are a lot of good fights on that card. So. How could it be all time? Well, I mean, Brent, it's the promotion business. Like I get you kind of got, yeah. I get yeah, it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know. You know what it is, but I mean, there are, there are like a lot of big names and like former champions on there, so like it will be a big card, but um, I think people would have an issue saying it's the biggest fight of all time, like the biggest card of all time. Who is the star right now of UFC outside of you? Um, Who is the star of the UFC? I mean, you could take it a couple ways. I think obviously the the main event of UFC 300 with Alex Piera, um is a good start, you know, and like the ironic thing about him, it's like in terms of mic skills non-existent but like he's so scary and everything it's you respect the dude you know so i think he's up there um you know i mean like max holloway's taking on justin gagey that's kind of a fight for the fans i feel like so that's going to be a big one still doing it oh gagey yeah i mean gagey is 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 a fighter's fighter man like i don't think he's ever going to stop like he's going to be 50 years old i feel like how old is he uh, I have no idea. We had him on, didn't we, one time? We did have him on. Ago? Yep, we did have him on. And surpri- right, right before his fight. Literally, like, the right yeah. before weigh-ins, he called him the show. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Brent Martin, Austin Lane, Brent and Austin show. And again, uh, Austin's got a fight coming up on April 27th. That's after the Jags do battle with 31 other teams for the NFL draft positioning. What will the Jags do? I find myself... Uh, I tweeted this this morning after we had shared a clip of 17. What's wild about this yesterday? We're talking and we agree about the 17th overall pick. We're like, hey, if they don't go wide receiver, they're going with pass rusher. Well, about an hour later in the show, not even an hour later, probably 20 minutes in the show, we had talked ourselves into Brock Bowers and tight end if that were to happen. Correct. Now, there's one guy for that spot. I mean, that's, that would be like saying, you know, every draft that somebody's going to slip to 17. We really don't think that's going to happen, but it was presented uh, as a question. So I think that's a little less real life, which brings in pass rusher. But I also find myself sitting here saying, is this the most intrigued I've been in a long time about the Jaguars draft? Okay. And if you go over the last few years, I mean, obviously Anton Harrison, when you're picking in the mid-20s to late-20s, I don't know how much intrigue. Now, there could be mystery. The mystery certainly is there. And remember going into last year's draft, I think Trent Polky said, we have three guys that we really like. He said that at the draft luncheon. And uh, if one of those three guys are on the board, we're going to be really happy. And it was pretty obvious Anton Harrison was one of those guys. I think sometimes they say that after the fact. I think this one was pretty obvious. They knew they they positioned themselves very well. They they liked him in that spot. They liked him at 24. They moved back to 25. I think they moved back to 26. I think that was the the way it went down. Uh, Maybe it was 27 where they ended up picking him. But they traded a couple times. You go a year prior, obviously, we're talking about Trayvon Walker. There's plenty of intrigue there. But we also knew that it was pass rusher and one of two, two guys. Correct. So there wasn't a lot of mystery. It was just what camp are you in? 
And there was a lot of momentum, actually, for Trayvon Walker, uh, even though a lot of the year had been around Aiden Hutchinson, the Jacksonville. The year prior, there was no mystery. It was, tr- it was Trevor Lawrence. And I don't know. We can keep going back and back. But, I mean, the last time, I'm trying to think the last time I was like, huh, what are they going to do? Again, like, if you're talking Taven Bryan, that's at the back end of the first round. Like, you have no idea what they're going to do there. Sure. I mean, you can take a quarterback sometimes at the end, back end of the first round, even if you got a guy. So they did have the two picks. I guess ETN was interesting, that draft, because it was the second pick. It was at 25th. So what would they do there? Mm-hmm. But we didn't have, like, we were talking still about Trevor most of the way that year. So we weren't talking about well, 25 as much. Yeah, but in 21, I mean, ETN was like, I didn't see that really coming yeah, in terms of either. taking a running back in the first round. I didn't really see Tyson Campbell happening. No. I didn't really see Walker. I mean, I think, you know, in 21, it was so lost in the fact of the, the big name of Trevor Lawrence that I don't think there's a lot of focus on what would happen after that. It's because, like, you're happy that you got Trevor Lawrence. But I think how that draft shook out, there were some surprises that you didn't really see coming. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I, that might have been a mysterious draft just based on the fact that Trent Baalke and Urban Meyer were in charge. Yeah. You know, because you had no... There was really, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, you know, Bulky had a history. Mm-hmm. But the urban stuff where you thought he had total control and he was pushing the buttons, which I think did happen most of the time, you really had no idea what he was going to do. Yeah. Uh, again, outside of number one with Trevor. And, and so that whole draft actually is very interesting. And at times it's looked very good. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably the best one. So let's just say well, going back to 2021, but there's so many times over the years. It was a surprise when they got Josh Allen, but everybody would have not, taken Josh Allen yeah, if given the opportunity. Nobody thought he'd slip to number seven. He just seven. fell. Like, I think, and once again, uh, somebody beat me to the, the punch here in the chats. 2020 was um, kind yeah. of a chaotic <laughs> yeah. draft year. You're not supposed to bring that up. Yeah. Well, I know. But they, <laughs> that one, we didn't really see happening like it did. That was a surprise. I was, right. I was actually pretty pumped up for LaVisca Chenault and – Unfortunately, that didn't really work out, but the whole trying to replace Jalen Ramsey, trying to replace Yannick Ngakwe with C.J. Henderson, Caleb on chase on, like, you might have had an idea of the direction that they're going to go, but the C.J. Henderson pick to me, where they really, you know, reached up to get him, was kind of the shocker. All right, here's, the, here's what I'm going to say. For a, there are a lot of different reasons you can pick your favorite draft. That's okay. But at this point, weeks away from the draft, I think this is the most fascinating where the Jags could go, a little bit of a mystery. You can argue this. I can argue that. The players that could be available, that will be like, oh, that's pretty good. I'm going to say, Austin, since 2016. In 2016, the Jaguars were drafting number five overall. Okay. I believe if you go back to that draft – I don't know how you got it. Yep. For one and two were quarterbacks. Oh, I don't have that draft in front of me, but um Did you hold. just tell me that he had that draft in front hey, of me? Hey, I had who they take I had who they took it to on sixteen. They took Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, Yannick Ngakwe, Sheldon Day. Ooh, that was a good draft. Brandon Allen, Jonathan Woodward, Tyron Holmes. That's what I had in front of me. Okay, I get you now. I understand. Yeah. I believe that might have been Carson Wentz. I'm not not sorry, uh Mariota and uh uh Winston. One two. And we knew they were going to go one, two. So then you had three, four, five. It was Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, Joey Bosa, ah, Zeke Elliott. It was those two guys. Missed it by that much. Well, I was still right. I did actually say Wentz at first. Wentz, Goff. So we knew they were well, going one, two. Goff, Wentz. Goff, Wentz. Goff was the first. I'm just. What? Let's get it. Be accurate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it really, the draft started at number three. And the Chargers were at three. The Cowboys were at four. And the Jags were at five. And really, there were three players that we thought were on the board. Joey Bosa, mm-hmm. Jalen Ramsey, and it wasn't Ezekiel Elliott, by no. the way, who the Cowboys took. It was DeForest Buckner, who the Niners took, I think, maybe at six or seven. Seven. So I'm going to say, given the positional change of those three players, D-line, pass rush, corner, that's where I think this draft feels like to me at 17. Okay. Because the Jags could go positionally in a few different ways. And it also is intriguing to see where they could move 
to go get an even a better – this might even add more intrigue because they could get aggressive and trade up since they're all the way down at 17 to bring a bunch of other guys into play. Like the three top receivers aren't in play for them right now, but they could make them in play. Brock Bowers, to me, isn't in play for them. He could make them in play if he slips to number 13 or so and you want to move up and go get him. Uh, Jared Verse could be in play whether you want to be aggressive to go get him or he falls to you. Or you just sit there and Brian Thomas, or, or maybe it's a defensive lineman, or maybe it's a pass rusher, or maybe it's everybody's favorite corner. I mean, so many ways, right? Yeah. I mean, that's I, – I got, I got to almost go back to 2016. I'll throw one other thing in 2016. And I wasn't correct about this, but I will admit going into that draft, I thought it was debatable that Miles Jack was the best player in that draft. Mm-hmm. Well, the Jags end up getting him in the second round. But – Nobody knew at the time if all the smoke was real about him dropping or if he was going to go in the top 10. I remember being in Chicago for that draft, and nobody really knew. So there was so much intrigue there about where a guy like him, who could be the best player in the draft, and I don't know if I was like alone on an island thinking that, but he definitely had a lot of talent. Yeah. But the knee injury was a thing. So, man, I, that's, I think I'm starting to think that way about this, seven, this 2024 draft at 17. Different situation. Um, but it feels a lot like that 2016 situation for me for the Jags where there's a lot of uh, ways to go. What what was the record off of 2015 where they, when oh, they drafted? Good. Yeah, it, was like, yeah. Uh, it would have been like 3 and okay. 13. I mean – Or maybe it was 4 the, and 12 or something. Yeah, I got you. The way that you're talking to me, if I didn't know like year by year how everything turned out, you're making it sound like – they're at a luxury right now. You're making it sound like they they won 12 games last year, where they can go. Ah, they can go this way. You can go that way. Possibly go this way. I mean, to me, it's more of an obvious thing. Like corner, okay, no, probably not because you have starters already. And now, once again, I know for the future you want to get a corner because guys are going to be leaving and everything. And I understand that. But if I'm Trent Bulky, if I'm Doug Peterson, I'm living in the now. I'm I'm living for this year. I'm not concerned two or three years down the line. I get sometimes as a GM and a head coach, you have to think that way. But if I'm on the hot seat, if a job's on the line, forget 2025. Forget 2026. I'm concerned right now. So if I have that kind of philosophy, well, then what are my options? My options are to help out Trevor Lawrence, to get another wide receiver, and a guy who's going to have a contract year, and a guy who we're going to have to negotiate in terms of, hey, do we do everything in our power to help you out? Are you happy being in Jacksonville? Do you want to play ball with us? Those conversations will take place. So I'm keeping that in mind. And if for some reason you don't get a wide receiver, Brock Bowers is gone, well, then maybe you can say, you know what? If we get an edge rusher right now, there's going to be some playing time involved. We, we can rotate them in right away. Can never have too many edge rushers. Let's go ahead and go that direction as well. Like To me, it's more obvious than people are leading it to believe. Now, in the past, the Jaguars have surprised us. They might do that again. But if I'm a GM, if I'm a head coach, and my job's on the line, it's pretty obvious to me. Yeah. I guess um, I don't think this is a luxury. I, like, I, I, don't, I think we're on the same page here, right, with the receiver stuff. But I also think we also were a little bit on the same page on the pass rusher stuff. Like, pass rusher is an important part of this to me. I think it's more important than people are playing. I've been saying that for a few months now, and I don't think people are playing pass rusher up enough. I think you need multiple of them. You have no depth there, really, that you like and rely on. I mean, it's those two guys, and that's it. They found that out last year. They did fix defensive line enough to now, I think, take away that as an issue for me. Now I really think they beefed it up. I mean, with the Armstead signing, the domino effect there is fantastic, actually, at defensive tackle because it makes Roy Robertson-Harris, Devon Hamilton, makes that group and whoever else. I mean, they even brought Ledbetter, and and that guy played okay for the Jags. Like, that makes you feel a lot better about that unit. So I agree with you on corner, and and a lot of people want corner, 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 and I ask, where do you play? Like, I keep hearing people say, well, the second and third round are going to be huge players. Like, where are you playing these guys? Whose spot are they taking? Ask yourself that question. So I don't necessarily think it goes to luxury pick as much as when you get to the second, third round, you're asking yourself, who is going to be better than what I already have? That's just reality. But in the first round, we know it can't be a luxury pick. It's got to be an impact player. So I don't mind what you're saying. Uh, In fact, I agree with you. I, I mean, I'm all aboard the receiver train. But if we just sit there and say what we've said in the last 24 hours and really for the last couple months, 
We said receiver. Makes a ton of sense. I continue to pound pass rusher. Makes a ton of sense. And then we threw in the equation a little bit on the tight end. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I can talk myself into that, but I'll, I'm just going to add this wrinkle. I think there's a good portion of people around here, and, and I don't like that we're on the same page here, but I think we're like, this is good for us in the front office of the Action Sports Act 24 7 network, <laughs> that we, we think that there's a possibility they could be aggressive and move up. Yes. Right? Like, there, there's not a guarantee. No way. You got to find a dance partner. It's got to be right. But I think it's certainly in play for them to move up in this draft and be aggressive based on all the things that we've talked about and what they've done so far. So I just gave you three real situations of the Jaguars either standing pat at 17 because players fall to them or going to be aggressive for any one of those three positions. And I think there are players that would be worth moving up a few picks or in the receiver position, maybe worth 10 picks to move Mm -hmm. up and go get. So that's really where I'm coming from. I, I don't think 17 is a luxury, Austin, but I do think there's still a variety of moves they could make that would make some sense for this football team. Um, but I know number one on that list, and, and we agree, is, is receiver. I think all the reasons you just checked off, from Trevor to the offense to the that's Ridley it. stuff, Brent, everything else. The end. That's Trevor. The end. Yeah, but it doesn't I don't... mean you can do it. Why not? If, if they don't move up and get the top three guys and they don't value Brian Thomas, you don't force receiver. No, I'm not saying but why can't you move up and get the top three guys is what I'm saying. Like, wh- we're about to find out how this team feels about Trevor Lawrence, really. Like, that's what I'm taking away from this draft. Okay, well, so you're telling me that if they don't move up in the top three, then they don't care as much about Trevor. No, because I'm actually a Brian Thomas believer as well. So, like, if they get Brian Thomas, I wouldn't be mad about it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. Um I don't know how they feel about it. I just think it's so easy to sit here and say they should trade up. They should trade back. I think that's harder than people think it is. You, these, you, the rest of the league seems to covet these three receivers too, which means the people in those positions, the teams in those positions, might really covet receiver too. And we already did this where there's like 14 teams in the first round that actually could take wide receiver. Yeah, <laughs> they could. So but we don't know what's going to happen. The, the price might be really hefty Yeah, uh, to be able to do that. So it, I just, overall, I, I think, uh, yeah, can you simplify it? I think so. But I don't think, I think you can oversimplify it too. I, I think there are different ways for the Jags to go. And to be honest with you, they don't have anything to do with the cornerback position where many people think that's a way they could go. Yeah. I don't think they're pay, taking corner at 17. Like I've been saying it since the combine. And all anything that's happened since the combine has just punctuated the point that I don't think they're doing that. Would you? So you wouldn't be disappointed if they took Edge? I mean, and, uh, and granted, there's, there are some good guys. You can get some good guys, I feel like, too, in the second round, but you wouldn't be disappointed if they got Edge? I would. Uh, listen, would I be a little disappointed because I kind of want receiver? The sexy play is wide receiver. All the things that you just said are not untrue about why to get wide receiver. But I can't sit here and think with, a, with 32 picks in the draft, I'm not going to be naive to think that the Jaguars are going to get what they want. There are other teams that are going to jockey for this stuff. There are other teams that might be more willing to sell more than the Jags want to sell. Whether that's right or wrong, that will be criticized and we can debate that. I'm just talking about reality. I think reality is sometimes tough to move where you want to move. The Jags said they tried to move like every round last year and couldn't do it. Is that them being stubborn and not giving up enough to do it? Maybe. I mean, well, I think it has something to do with it, right? Yeah, maybe. but it also other teams sh- moved up. It also shows that, I mean, I do think there's a price point, right? Calvin Ridley wasn't going to get $23 million a year from the Jags. Correct. You have to cut it off at some point. So I think, uh, I, I just think the reality is it's going to be more difficult, even if I would love to see them go get one of those guys or get something. So, so to answer that question, I think, a sound move for the Jacksonville Jaguars. If they cannot move up and get a guy that they covet in a pass catching role, or they don't value the Mitchells and Thomases to a 17th overall pick, and a Jared Verse or somebody like him, name your favorite pass rusher in this draft, slips to them at 17, where they don't have to move around, I think that would be a very sound football decision okay. for this franchise right now. I think it's a need position. I think it makes them better. Oh, in absolutely. 24 makes them better. But you just know how I feel about it. I'm yeah. trying to help out Trevor Lawrence as much as I can. Yeah. And, and, and listen, 
here's here's where the, the football people would say, we are helping out Trevor Lawrence. We're getting him the football back. We're getting off the field on third <laughs> down, right? Like yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah, get yeah, some yeah. of that. But yeah. which isn't totally false. It's kind of a weak way to explain it, but it's still not totally false. I mean, their their defense, they're yeah, it's like it's like drafting Brian Anger in the third round and saying how about our defense because you're gonna pin him deeper in the end zone. Okay, we can play that game. That's, maybe that's a cool. A little bit different. Well, all right. I feel mm. like that's a little bit different. Yeah, <laughs> but maybe not that far different. I saw the, the Delphonic brought up a good point. You know, I mean, Houston had their guy with uh, Will Anderson, and they much to some people saying ah, it's a lot to move up for a guy we don't know if he's gonna be a legit pass rusher or not. Well. They got their guy. Listen, we're all on board with it. I, I don't think there's anybody that's not on board with it. Uh, I think we're getting a lot of in the chat about it. I think, I think most people, if we took a vote, in fact, maybe I'll throw one out there, say, hey, would you be happy if the Jags trade up in the top 10 to get one of these three receivers? I think everybody would be on board. And, and I, I would applaud it. I like the aggressive nature. It showcases me to all in even more than it looks like they're all in. And they're doing what you said to Trevor Lawrence and everything else. Makes a lot of sense. I'd, I'd love to see it happen. I just don't think all the time that hap- like it's just easier said than done. I think it was hard for Houston to do what they did. They were able to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And now they what? They don't have a couple of picks. Like They don't pick until like number 70 in this draft hey, because of it. Are they worried about that? They don't seem to be. But we've got a year sample of. Well, it, look, listen, okay. I mean, what it looks like now, it looks like in two years, is can be totally different yeah, in that regard. Yeah, and obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. But I guarantee the Houston radio stations right now are saying, "Oh man, I wish we had a first round draft." No, you're you're feeling pretty good about what you have on your team right now. No, but at the Houston radio stations next year, when they go, if they go nine and eight and barely miss make uh, miss the playoffs, might then be saying it about this. Yeah, year. maybe get a draft pick. Yeah, like, put I mean, all listen. in for Will Anderson. He's got eleven sacks in two years. Like, listen, who knows? A lot of things can happen, but the fact of the matter is you moved up and you got the NFL Rookie of the Year. Yeah. I think if any team can say that you moved up and got the NFL Rookie of the Year, you're going to be pretty happy with that. Well, and this, this is why I just always say um, just remember where you stand right now on it. Oh, so I'm, in a year from now, like noted. if it doesn't work out, right, like in the Jags do it, well, well remember we were 90% Brent, on board with doing it. Brent, it worked out because they won the division last year. Like – it, it already worked. Like, you took a team that was the laughing stock of the NFL that had all the bad optics of the Houston Texans. You moved up. You got your guys. You won the division. When nobody, except Casey Kurtz, when nobody picked you to win the division. Yeah, it, it worked It for worked. Now. Okay. I mean, listen, Tyson Campbell looked like he was about to sign an extension for a long term. Now we don't even know if he's going to be on the Jags after this year. Okay. That's just, it's just the way it works. Sure. Year one, it worked. Yep. But we are the same folks that will go back and criticize the situation. Oh, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they do this? Well, well, because sometimes when you take those risks, you do whiff. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, but I'm, but I'm, I'm with the risk. In fact, I'll see if everybody else is with the risk here in the commercial break. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll check on uh, the pulse of the fans when it comes to trading up into that uh, top 10. Let's take a break. Uh, Brent and Austin show, and we've got a lot happening in the chat. We'll get to some of your questions and thoughts on uh, this situation, the Jags draft, as we really get a lot closer now. Three weeks from tomorrow, the Jaguars uh, will draft. Shock your mock season around the corner. Hey, you got to send them in. you got to send your shock your mocks. We need 16 of them over the next couple of weeks. We're going to pit you against another. It's bracket time early. Roast time coming. Shock your mock 2024. Maybe they'll steal that over there, too. Jeez. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. 
Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand, but if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community, giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and many, there's a car for every member of the family, and the customer service is second to none. Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. It might look quiet, but that's just a chance to admire the facilities on the campus of the University of North Florida Ospreys. The stretch run has arrived in college sports, and for the Ospreys, that means the end of the beach volleyball season coming soon. And critical series for UNF softball and on the baseball diamond for the Ospreys team. Tennis is trying to peak in time for April's ace Sun tourney as well. The postseason in golf is on the horizon, and track and field has its busiest stretch of the season. For news, schedules, and results, just go to UNFOspreys.com. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part? They did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings Dot com today for your free quote. Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville, Orange Park. And now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room. A full bar and menu. My favorite sushi in town. And I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet. That's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid. You against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun, it's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice, it doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Welcome back to the Fred and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. All riled up on a Wednesday. Hope uh, you stay safe out there. I guess we're supposed to get some pretty big wind gusts and first alert weather day, some rain, and then clears out of there for a pretty good rest of the week. Had beautiful weather the last handful of days, so good timing for it. We got the games in last night, so no games today. So selfish around here. That's all that matters. Just get the games in. Uh, Brent Martino, Austin Lane, Jason Hamby, and uh, by the way, no gate fees today at 2 o'clock, uh, our topic, and Hamby's going to He's saving all his stuff for this one. He fired up. It was his idea. Okay. 
guest players, mm-hmm. uh, should they be allowed? Has it got out of control? What's the point of them? Why do we even do it? That'll be the big youth sports topic. That's not just baseball, softball. That's it. I'm really curious, does that happen in a lot of sports, or is it just in baseball? And I think we see it abused in baseball maybe more, or is that just because that's the sport I'm around? I don't know. Uh, maybe lacrosse and basketball and others do the same thing. Uh, so that'll be a topic, plus our high-five power polls, uh, committed to the uncommitted, and uh, we will visit with two former stars on the softball field that are now in the coaching ranks here locally. So uh, that will be a lot of fun. That's coming up 2 o'clock today on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. You can find it at Action News Jacks app, actionnewsjacks.com. No gate fees presented by Nimic Buick. GMC Brent Morton, Austin Lane, Jason Hamby, and back to the NFL conversation and back to the chat. The chat is popping today, Hamby. What you got? What caught your attention? Yeah, Robert is. Uh, they're talking about, or they were a couple minutes ago, what it would take for us to move up in the first round. And Robert says a second in twenty twenty five and seventeen points. Why was get them to the eighth pick for a top three receiver? And Mister Pico Villavard came back and said seventeen and a second will not be enough. 17, a first, and a third is more like it. So the question is, which one of these guys is closer? Um, and where do you see kind of on that pendulum swing of how much we'd have to give up to trade up into the top 10, let's say, between 6 and 9? Yeah, I mean, two first-round picks for sure, and then throw a sprinkle on a, a third or a fourth more than likely. I think uh... – we did this a couple of weeks ago, and, and maybe it was Houston that came up from number – well, I think we did the Atlanta pick. They came up 26 all the way to, like, number 6 yeah, but we back mentioned in 2011. Houston a, bit, a lot, too. But Houston was, like, they came up and they gave up a first round. Like, I don't know who said it on the chat. You're the one that caught it. But if you said, like, 17 and a second-round pick, uh-uh. That ain't it. Like, that's what, that's what I mean. That's where this is harder than your fantasy football trade that you're trying to just, you know, pull one over on your buddy. That's not, that's not what this is. So Houston traded um, their 12th pick, their 33rd pick, and its 2024 first-round pick. They essentially traded three uh, first-rounders. I'm sorry. Rounders. And then another third-round pick to Arizona. To move up how many spots from where to where? Um... My bad. I think they might have been like good, twelve. Man. I think they were twelve to three or twelve. To so they tra- okay, yeah, because they trade the twelfth pick. So the twelfth, the thirty third, two thousand and twenty four first round and a third rounder to Arizona for number three and number one hundred five. That's a ton. Yeah, that's a. That is a ton. It's a load. Now listen, you're yeah, not I mean, getting the top three, getting the top five, because what happens when you do that? You're basically getting the best player on the board that's not a quarterback or however that shook sure. out last year, right? I mean, so, is Will Anderson bad all of a sudden? No, he's, I'm not telling you it's a wrong decision. Yeah, yeah. It's a risky and a lot of picks. I mean, they gave up a first rounder. Essentially, that 33rd pick holds a ton of control. It's a it's a great pick to have in the draft. It's on the edge, and also you sit on it for a night, which means you can shop that too. Like it's a really good pick to have. And then and then this year's. Now this year's because they did pretty well would have been like 24 or whatever it is. Yeah, But they couldn't even predict that. I mean, as you're looking at it in your Houston, you're probably thinking you're giving up like a 15th overall pick. Yeah. Right? I mean, so that is a ton of draft capital to give up. Like, he better be good. And he was this year. Mm -hmm. But I also think that's very difficult. I do think the Jags will get a little bit of a break, even though the amount of spaces they're jumping up. I think it's different when you go into the top three because you get to control the draft at three when quarterbacks are being taken at one and two. I think it's a little bit different when you go up and maybe let's just say the drags were in trade with like Atlanta at number eight. Mm. And there's still a receiver left on the board that they covet. I don't think it's that expensive, but it certainly gives you an idea how expensive it is. Yeah. You I mean, better be right. Yeah. You're you're talking <laughs> at least two first round picks. Like that's that's just gonna happen. Yeah. Yep. And you know, where the Jags are positioned, like I, I know, like Arizona was probably looking at the think of the same thing. Like, we're going to get a 12, we're going to get a 33, we're going to get a 16, and we're going to get a third rounder. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're doing business with the Jags, I mean, I think you're like, well, the Jags could be pretty good this year. So they're probably more like a 22nd, 24th kind of pick. Um, you're not getting that in the teens pick. So maybe that means you got to throw in a third and a fourth next year on top of it. It's just expensive. And, Look, and, and guys, you got to understand this too, and for whatever reason, and I'm not telling you I agree with it, but 
I'm done with. I'm tired of draft picks. To be honest with you, I think the Jags have had too many of them over the last handful of years. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. But I, I can't ignore the fact that front office people absolutely adore them. They love them. They covet them like they're their children. So giving them up is not an easy thing for them to do. Knowing what we know now about Josh Allen, would you have sacrificed what Houston gave up for Will Anderson? Would you have sacrificed that for Josh Allen? Uh... <laughs> I'm going to say um, really, really nice thoughts there, everybody. Yeah, I, I want to say yes. But that's one, two, three other players. Two of them absolute starters at pick number 33 and pick number 22 in this year's draft. Mm-hmm. And they could have stayed at 12 and got, I don't know, the next I mean, guy off the board at the pass rusher spot instead of Will Anderson or where the sure. Jags would have. Yeah, yeah. I, but, well, I mean, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, would you have gave, given up all of that for right now man, I fell a top five pass rusher? Yeah, I'll and say And once yes. again, not calling Will Anderson. I'm calling Josh Allen a top five pass rusher, obviously. You, you would have done it. I think so. Yeah. I would have done it too. A lot of hesitation, though, on my part. Yeah, yeah. We were uh, playing some and mental I, gymnastics there, man. Well, I'm just trying to give you a real answer. Oh, hey, we appreciate it. <laughs> we appreciate it. So, but I think it's certainly debatable. You okay. asked the same question last year at this time, and you'd say, no way in hell. Correct. That's how fast it changes. Yep. You know? So, um, Hamby, would you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Absolutely. No hesitation. Didn't even think. The kid's corner. Wow, well, we gave him a little. All hopped up homework. on Capri Suns over there. Gave him yeah, some I had plenty of time. Homework. Yeah, you had, you had some time. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, I, again, like we're talking two starters. I know, but it's, I mean, a, a premier pass rush is hard to find, man. They don't come easy. How many premier pass rushers are there in the NFL? Hmm. Good Eight. question. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I would probably like when you say premier, like game records, legit. Yeah, I can take it. I think for me to get to premier, you're like 13 plus sacks a season okay. type of guy. Okay. Like, and, and yeah, I think that's it. I can maybe sneak somebody else in there, but I'm telling you, the amount of people that have 13 plus sacks is very slim. Like it's not a it's not a big number. Well, see, but like I don't think did even Garrett have thirteen sacks last year? But he I'm had still fourteen and a half. Yeah, but okay, got you. Um, I mean, I give it to Nick Bosa, give it to Brian Burns, Watt, Garrett, Montez Sweat's pretty good, man. Um, you giving it to Trey Hendrickson? I mean, you almost got her right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Trey Hendrickson. Max Crosby can be a game wrecker. Rashawn Gary, <clears throat> I mean. Ask about the playoffs this past year. I didn't really see you against San Francisco or Dallas. So, Rashawn Gary's kind of on the fence. I mean, Khalil Mack played at a high level. I would say, theoretically, Brent, there's about 10 premier pass rushers. That, that, that can be game changers. Do you have the sack numbers in front of you? Is that what no, you're no. At? I'm just looking up just edge rushers in the NFL. But yeah. I can get the sack so numbers about from 10, last year. So, it's still, yeah, that's a, it's a very, it's a luxury, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just do the sack numbers from last year. It'd be interesting because I, again, I characterize. I think it's over a dozen sacks. I think we've done this exercise before. Maybe it's gone up with seventeen games now. But it's uh, if you get above a dozen sacks, like you're in a pretty uh, exclusive group. It's not an easy number to get to. Mm-hmm. Nine uh, edge guys had more than nine sacks, or n- m- more than thirteen. More than th- nine guys did. Yeah, Matabuke. Matab- 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 uh, from the Ravens, Parsons, Miles Garrett, Max Crosby, oh, Daniel Hunter, Khalil Mack still had 17 last year. It's six in one game. Josh Allen, Trey Hendrickson was second with 17 and a half or tied with Josh Allen and then TJ Wall with 19. Yeah, and by the way, Matabuke might be actually more from the defensive interior. It depends. They move him around a lot, yeah. but I get your point. So nine. I mean, that's that's where you're at. That's now, you eight. might have had a guy who's hurt or something that usually does that, but I mean, you're talking about, that, you're, that's right. I mean, you're less than a dozen pass rushers. That are that are in that category. Now listen, here's the beauty of it for Jacksonville. If Trayvon takes one more step, 
from a statistical standpoint, Chats might have two of those guys. Yeah. Woo. Yep. But I think this does echo to your point. Like, is he worth you, – you basically asked the question because we're going what Houston did. Houston gave up number 12, number 33, a first-round pick this year and a third-round pick this year to get Will Anderson. Correct. He was the defensive rookie of the year. I think he had seven and a half sacks, if I'm not mistaken. He did. Um, and so then Austin says, well, now knowing what you know, Second all-time in franchise history, by the way, for Josh Allen. About to get a big deal. Coming off this monster season. Had a good rookie season. He's been a really good player and everything for the Jags. Would you have given up that? Would you have given up that 12th pick and 33 and maybe a 24 and then the third-round pick this year, too, to get what you get? And I guess the answer, I hesitated a bunch because that's a lot of starters you're, you're passing up on. And, and maybe there's no bigger fan than Josh Allen in this town than me. And I still hesitated a bunch. You guys were pretty quick on it. Like, yeah, un- unquestionable. And you're probably right. So I would ask you the same question about a receiver. Well, it comes down to, do you think a receiver is a premier position? And I do. So I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, it's funny. It's like Justin Jefferson came from the 22 hole, and that's where he is. Uh, I don't know where Devontae Adams was picked. Like if you think, who's the top five receivers in the game? Right? I mean, Adams was picked, I think, second round, wasn't yeah, he? Third? Yeah, Fresno State. State yeah. So, yeah. so give me top five receivers in the game right now, in your opinion. Oh, man, Brent. Um, yeah, we might just miss Tyreek right? Hill, Justin Jefferson. Um, Jamar Chase? Yeah, but, I mean, he was hurt last year a little bit. So, okay, Jamar Chase. Now, healthy. he's a top five pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's stop there. Okay. That's fine. Jamar Chase. To get Jamar Chase, would you do what? You just did to give up for Will Anderson. No, I mean, it had to be Justin Jefferson. Because I think Justin Jefferson is by far, or Tyreek Hill. Like, Jamar Chase, yeah, he's shown me a lot, but the, the injury, it's, it's hindsight's 2020, Brent. Like, he's been hurt. So, like, knowing what I know about Justin, Je- I mean, Jamar Chase, would I give up what I had to give up with, like, a Josh Allen, like we just did exercise? Probably not. Now, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, yes. Okay, so this is a dangerous game now you're playing. You're willing to go up and get a res- one of these top three receivers, but you're asking them to be two unicorns in the game in Justin Jefferson and, and Tyreek I mean, Hill. if I can get Cooper Cup healthy, sure. Like, once again, it's just – it's hindsight's twenty twenty, Brent. No, I get it. I, okay. I, I thought you were going to say yes to Jamar Chase, by the way. Jamar Chase is a brilliant player. He's a great player, but once again, like, he's been hurt a little bit. Yeah, so it I mean, makes me nervous. I mean, Jefferson missed like six games last year too, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Hey, where are you on this one? Jamar Chase, would you give up that kind of capital? Go get Jamar Chase. Because let's, let's be honest, guys. If a dune say Marvin Harrison Jr. or uh, Neighbors is Jamar Chase, you won. I mean, like that, that's good. Like, I don't know if you won as a team and what you're giving up, but I'm just saying, like, you won as a player. Like, that's, yeah. that's a really good player. Like, I don't know if we can ask these guys to be better than that. That, yeah. that's, that might, that's unfair. I mean, that's like asking – I mean, you can't ask every quarterback that comes in the league, even if he's drafted number one or two, to be Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I'm with that. I, I don't think – I think the tables of judging uh, how successful they would have to be to make it worth it, you couldn't only limit to the top two. Now, I would say if it's Jamar Chase at three or a guy like that, then I think okay. I'd still do it. So here's Jamar Chase's numbers. Rookie year, 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. Yeah, unreal. I mean, pro bowler, could have been an all pro. His second year, 1,046, nine touchdowns. You missed some games there? He missed four. Uh, was 2022, is that 17 games or 16 games? Uh, 17, I think, yes. Yeah, missed. Okay, so he missed five then. 2023. Missed one game. I thought he missed more. 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. But that's with no burrow. A lot of it. Kind of got his okay. touch. Give, give me Justin Jefferson. Uh, here, I'll do Justin Jefferson's for you. Okay? Just uh, to call apples apples. Because we're going to lose games on Jefferson, too, this year. Like, his numbers were not as strong as they've been. I mean, he's been incredible. Uh, so, I'm not trying to denounce Justin Jefferson here. Okay, in 2020, he's uh, 1,400 yards, 7 TDs, so very similar to the rookie year of Chase. Yeah, okay. Um, 
And actually, really, it didn't I feel take, like he. But he had one season though where he went off. Yeah, you, okay. it's coming. Okay. Uh, Jamar Chase had uh, 13 touchdowns. I think that rookie year you said 108 catches, <laughs> 1600 yards, 10 touchdowns. Yeah, in year that two. was the, that was a big season. No, this one's even bigger. 128, 1808. Okay. Holy yeah. Crap. Hey, yeah. we're all good then. Uh, so there's, he, there's, there's, there's a difference there, Brent. Oh, but Jeff, that's his first three years. So yeah, okay. so you're right. You're right. And but this is the year that he missed games. Like he had 68 catches, a thousand yards. And um, five touchdowns. He had this year. This year's chase year was how many games did he play in where he had a thousand yards? How many seasons? No, I'm saying this last season he got hurt. Oh, 10. but he still had a thousand. So he played in ten games. Ten games. What, what, what was uh, the last year for Chase? Um, this last year, twenty three. Twenty three. He had sixteen. He started sixteen games. Oh, and he still only had a thousand yards. He had twelve hundred. Oh, twelve hundred and, and okay. Yeah. It was the previous year that he missed five games, and he still had a thousand yards. Right. Correct. Yes. So they're about equal in that. They were close. I mean, close. Yeah. Uh, really, like, he just hasn't had this monster year like Jefferson has. He's well, played years. one less I mean, year. Jefferson's had two monster years. Uh, he's actually had three monster years. 1,400, 1,600, okay. 1,800. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many career touchdowns does Chase have? Uh, um, Jamar Chase has 29 career touchdowns. That's interesting. Like, uh, Jefferson has 30. Yeah. In four years. Yeah. But with one more year. So it's wild he's not... Give me the... Just give me the receptions and yards, though. No, I mean, it's, yeah. am- it's, it's amazing. So... But my, I guess my point, man, is like you, you know what a player looks like, right? You know, mm-hmm. sure, you got to bank on health. I get it. Uh, even, jo- even Josh Allen for this exercise. I mean, he, he missed a half a year uh, two years ago, right, and was banged up. I think he only had two and a half sacks that season. Correct. So you're going to get hurt in this league. You're going to miss time. Now, you can't miss, like, a lot of time. You've got to be able to be on the field more often than not. I think Jefferson has so far. I think overall Jamar Chase has. I think we know he's a game changer. He was a game changer for them to go to the Super Bowl for Burrow in year two. Mm -hmm. And I think we think that he's projected to be a game changer for a long time to come, so much so that Jamar Chase is going to make $30 million a year, most likely on a new contract. The bottom line that I would say is, if you're going to make a move up to one of these receivers, you got to hope he's Jamar Chase. I think it's pie in the sky to hope that he's Justin Jefferson or Tyreek Hill. I think it's, I think it's a little outlandish to put those expectations on a guy. Um, it's really how it impacts your football team. Do you get more wins? Do you end up going to the Super Bowl? And then I don't give a damn who he is <laughs> yeah. if he helped your team go to the Super Bowl. But if we are going to compare him to what you have to be, I think we got to – we got to go a notch below, like the elite player in the game or the top two ga- the unicorns in the game. And I think Jamar Chase is a fair one. Um, I think we see guys that can put up Jamar Chase's numbers. I think that's what a number one receiver looks like. And I think for a Dunze, neighbors, Marvin Harrison, if you're going to give up that draft capital, he's going to be that guy. He's going to be like Houston Gutt. He's going to be the offensive rookie of the year, maybe, or at least in that kind of conversation. And, and I guess maybe above everything else, Austin, in this conversation is got to come in and make an impact right away. Because if you're going to go mortgage a little bit of the future with that draft capital that you're giving up to go yeah. move up 10 spots, you can't but wait around. This isn't a project. This is Trayvon. You could wait around a little bit. I mean, people didn't like it, but you did. You can't wait around. You got to come in here and make a huge impact right away in year one. If you're the guy that I'm going to get at number six, seven, and eight and giving up two first round picks and a second round pick and a third round pick on top yeah. of it. No, no, I hear what you're saying here, and, and and I agree with you. I just think that if I'm moving up, like there, there's got to be a premium on wide receiver as well. There's a premium on an edge rusher. There's a premium on wide receiver. And if I can get a, a guaranteed top five, top six, top seven wide receiver, then sure. But like if you want to go over Jamar Chase's numbers, and once again, you can say the quarterback of last year, but he was 12th in receptions and 12th in yards. Now injuries had something to do with it, but like Tyree Kill, C.D. Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, Puka Nakua, A.J. Brown, D.J. Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Nico Collins, Mike Evans. Like there's a lot of great wide receivers out there. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now, like would I trade what I know now for Nico Collins? No, I'm not giving up two first rounders. Would I trade what I know now for having made Puka Nakua you can make an argument for? <laughs> How about uh, C.D. Lamb? I mean, you almost have to. Yeah, the guy had 700 yards receiving last year. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're trying to find. Yeah. That's what you're trying to find. You're trying to help Trevor. You're trying to do all those things, but you're trying to find that. And by the way, as a guy who says, I don't need to hold on to these draft picks like they're my children, I will say it's still hard to part with that kind of capital. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you 
you're building a roster, sustainability, all this stuff. Young players in the first round really matter. I think it starts to really, after you get by the top 50 players, top 40 players in the draft, I think you bring a hell of a lot more risk into play in your evaluations, the positions of what are available. So that even comes into play in the second round for the Jags this year. But that first round stuff, man, I mean, again, for Houston, that was ballsy. Yeah. To, to do what they did, to, to go get a guy – and I don't know what other pass rushers now in hindsight were even available last year because the, the bottom line is for this to work out well in Houston, and it has already to your point, he's got to be the best one of the class. Like, you can't be the guy in the third round. Who's the third round guy out of uh, Tampa? Yeah, yeah, right? Had a good year for the Bucks. Mm -hmm. Like, if that guy's better in the second or third round than Will Anderson, then you kind of made a mistake. Unless unless you're just both really good. Correct, yeah. Right? yeah unless yeah. you're both really good. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, there are just some that you're going to miss on. But, again, that's a lot of capital to build, to bring up. And you got to be able to sustain it. Because I think you could make the case. Let's just say. Let's just say it falls down a notch in Houston this year. Well, I think it's fair to make the case that, okay, well, you didn't have a first-round pick, a third-round pick, a second-round pick last year. This team could be way better off as a whole if you did utilize them. But right now the player you got looks like that was a win. Yeah. So it's a win in year one, but again, I, life comes at you fast in the NFL. <laughs> it can be a loss in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. The the way that the, the way this thing works. So uh, fascinating, fascinating conversation to figure out uh, what the Jaguars should do with seven. And that's really to to put a bow on this first hour of the show. As we're three weeks away now from the draft, draft eve. I, I really just find this draft at seventeen, and I didn't know I felt this way until really this week. To be as fascinating as it is, I think the Jags can move up. I think they can move back. I think they can sit and end up with a really good player that people know. I think they can end up with a really good player at three to four different positions. I disagree with everybody that wants corner. Everybody right now, I don't think corner makes sense for the Jags at 17. But I'll hear you out, and you might be right and I might be wrong. I think you can even make a slight case for defensive linemen if the Byron Murphy guy's there or whatever, and you think he's really good. You can add young depth to that, that the guy that will play. He'll rotational play along with a pass rusher. So I think there's a lot of ways to go. I saw somebody say offensive line. I'm like, I don't get that. I mean, if you're getting an offensive line at 17, I don't know where the hell he's playing. I mean, I don't know if he's playing on this new squib kick kickoff team or what, <laughs> but I don't know what he's doing. So, like, that makes no sense to me. There are some that make no sense. Uh, but I kind of said the same thing last year, and they picked offensive linemen. <laughs> yeah. So, I just find a lot of intrigue here because I think the ja I think this is a pretty good draft. I think the Jags have a chance to get a really good football player that can help them, like, right away mm -hmm. and might even be a stud. I think you might find, like, the C.D. Lamb types that go to 17 or a Justin Jefferson goes to 22 that might be – better than the rest. You might get a Jared Verse, seriously, that slips down, and he might become a, a perennial 10-sack guy. Yeah, I don't see it with the corner spot as much. I'm not as in love with these corners as everybody else is. And maybe it's just a positional thing for me that I've kind of already said, all right, we'll see you in the second or third round. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the bottom line is that it's, a, it's a fascinating draft for the Jags. It's a huge draft to find an impact player in the first round because I am going to continue to say this. Whoever they pick at number 48, and when we talk about this the week after the draft, I'm going to ask you where that number 48 pick is playing. On this roster, where is he playing? If the Jags get corner, who's he beating out? Now, if the Jags get pass rusher in the second round, I know where he's playing. Correct. But I don't think... Well, we hope. I mean, depending on Trayvon Walker, though. He might be starting. You know, like, well, I mean, I don't think... I could have probably bumped down Trayvon Walker, but... Probably not. You never know. But again, I, I, I believe that pass rusher, when you're in those third down situations, he's going to get on the field a bunch. Yes. Like, there are a lot of times when Trayvon and Josh come off the field for a series. That guy's going to get on the field a bunch. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely see them moving Trayvon Walker down to the three on pass rushing situations and then... Letting, putting that guy out. Letting the, the, the new guy cook, if you yeah. will. Yeah. So, like, so for everybody that will say this and still mad about it last year, sure, do you want impact in the second round, third round, even the fourth round? Yes. But depending on who they take, I don't know where they're playing. I think there are a couple spots to be able to play, and outside of that, I think it's very hard to get on the field based on what you did in free agency, based on what you're bringing back, based on who you're paying, based on who you drafted. So that's why, in my opinion, that the 17 pick is so big. 
Mm -hmm. because he can really make a huge impact on your football team, whoever you take at 17. Unless you freaking take corner or offensive lineman. Like, that's when it turns into a luxury pick, which would piss you off. Correct. Yes. All right, let's take a break. That was fun. I still haven't put the poll question out there. The chat's going crazy today. Yeah, man. You guys are all a lot of good comments. Was it a rainy day? Not doing anything at work? I like it. I know you're finding us here on the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. We got you. ActionNewsJacks.com, Action News Jacks app. Plenty of places to find us. 1 o'clock, we'll have Cup Date 1 30 a week with Action Sports Jacks. 2 o'clock, no gate fees. And three weeks from tomorrow. What are they doing inside that building? Better get it right. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnik Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnik family. We've purchased six different vehicles from Nimnik Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimnik Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. What started out as Better People, Better Projects just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting BetterExteriors.com. Better Exterior Solutions. Experience better. Get outside. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Make friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes! Learn life lessons with the first team. Golf is kind of like life in a way. You can take some stuff you learn on the course and take that and use it in every single day life. Donate to First Tee's Play Day campaign and everybody wins. For every $10 you've donated, you're entered to win a free round with a buddy. At the stadium course, home of the players, with this guy, Len Matisse. Scan the code on your screen or visit actionnewsjacks.com to learn more. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you and a Kia. And Michael Montiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability. Three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. 
Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier Softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find Find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Welcome back to the Fred and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Oh, we got some breaking news in here. I'm going to be sick. Yep. You guys are so soft, man. Stop being afraid of everybody. We're so soft. Oh, bro. Afraid of everybody. Brent, we finished second last year in the, the division, in case you didn't realize. Yeah, this ain't everybody, Brent. We're fine. We're we'll fine. Not worried about it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, that's what happens when you help out a young quarterback. Get him his guys. So should we tell everybody what happened? <laughs> Hold on, I'm pulling up. Well, the, if people uh, don't know already, I mean, it's everywhere. But yeah, Brent, go ahead and break the news. Do we have some sound? Do we have some music we can break the news with? <laughs> you want a movie? somber. Yeah. What was the music where they played at the Titanic when it was going down the, the <laughs> ship? That's how I feel right now. Oh, man, what about Mike Evans going to Houston? Oh, what happens if they get Mike Evans? Oh, okay. They didn't get him? Whew. It was Keenan Allen I think they were hot on, too. Keenan right? Allen, yeah. Yeah. Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans. Going to the Texans. I just said, what the hell, Buffalo? <laughs> right? <laughs> I tagged them, too. Good. Good. Unbelievable. So, but listen, we wondered if he would go somewhere, right? Yeah. I mean, it seems like he's wanted out for three years, which also might be a little buyer beware on the Houston front, but from that standpoint. So, like, Adam, is he going to be a happy player? Who yeah. knows? But Adam Schefter reporting blockbuster bills are finalizing a trade to send four time Pro Bowl wide receiver Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans for draft pick compensation. See, like, if it was like for Nico Collins, for. Oh, no. Somebody. Draft pick compensation? Yeah, like what? Well, because here's the deal: they're taking on like thirty million dollars. Like his con- now, maybe they redo it, but yeah. I think his deal is like thirty. I think he was like thirty-one against the cap this year. So I mean, it's a what's this say to Josh Allen and Buffalo? Buffalo is just shredding people. Yeah, uh, or or their roster. Yeah, who they have a, a receiver now? Like. No Gabe Davis. Davis. Gabe Davis and That's what I'm saying. Who do they have? Dalton Kincaid. Ah, oh, yeah. There we go. I just got hey, two, well, two separate texts. This is what happens when you start running the football a lot more. <laughs> well, they're going. It's going to be the Cook Show now. Chalk him up as another wide receiver, by the way, going in the first round. True. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> I just got two separate texts that both said the same thing. Jags are screwed. You got, I mean. No, I mean. Well, okay. So, first of all, I, wa- I got to say the draft pick compensation. Because what I'm worried about, what do they have. <laughs> well, they no, have for real. But what I'm worried about, I mean, so they don't for sure, right? We we know this because like what I'm worried about is they get something in Buffalo, and then Buffalo uses that compensation to trade up to get the, a new wide receiver. Yeah, that probably will ahead of the Jaguars. It probably will. Oh, fantastic! Houston, the Houston Texans um, draft picks in 2024 are. Oh, they do have a 23rd overall pick from uh, Cleveland. Oh, for Deshaun. For Deshaun. So they probably gave up that then. They probably gave up that. They have a 59th overall pick. They have an 86. So they've got one in every round, and then you get uh, – yeah, they've got one in every round. All right, so the Bills are going to have two first – the Bills are going to move up. The Bills will have two first-rounders. I mean, this is prob- – how much do you think this is? First-rounder and like a third? Or is it a second? Because here's the deal. They are taking a ton of money off the hand. The Bills the Bills had motivation to get rid of Diggs yeah, yeah. from a money standpoint, probably an attitude standpoint, and everything else. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure they were going to, like, fleece him. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go. Compensation. 
updates. Adam Schefter reporting. Bills receive 2025th second round pick via Minnesota. Texans receive Stefan oh Diggs and a 2024 sixth round pick. Who <laughs> love those sixth round picks? And a 2025 fifth round pick. A second? So all they gave up was a second. So really, they gave up a second. They got a fifth and a sixth back? Correct. So they really, this was a money. Man, you guys yeah. are so soft. Well, hang on. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Like, you Bro. know where I'm going with this? We could have gave up a second round pick for Stefan Diggs being Jacksonville? Well, yeah, but would you pay him $30 million, whatever it costs? If, like, if you I'd rather have gotten Gabe. I'd rather have Ayuk or, or Higgins for yeah. that kind of money. And I, honestly, I'd rather have a younger guy, I think, than Diggs at this stage. Yeah. I'm serious. Like I, yeah. I, I'm, now, listen, you piece. I'm not telling you this doesn't look dangerous. I'm just saying, would it? This isn't a compensation deal as much as it's a money deal and a new scenery for Diggs. I mean, Diggs has been a little bit of an issue there. Sure. I mean, from at least the noise, the noise says. I don't know how big of an issue he's been. He's a very talented guy, of course. But all I know, Brent, about Diggs is listen. Say what you want about the attitude. Say what you want about his age. Now he's 30. When he went to Buffalo. Josh Allen got a lot more confident. Yeah. Josh Allen became Josh Allen. He's going to Houston, and once again, he doesn't have to be the guy in Houston. Like, you have plenty of other talent. Like, you can fill in in a role. You can be 1A, or you can even be a 2, really, with Nico. That's, I mean, if I'm CJ Stroud right now, I'm happy. Of I'll say that you much. You should be. You should be. And by the way, what you said for Buffalo is right on the money, man. Because I always say when Buffalo traded. Um, that that trade to me stands out. That state that trade to me prompted one of my seven reasons of how to fix the Jags is you've got to be bold and make a move. I thought I was like, what are you giving up here? If you're Minnesota, uh, and what are you trading away draft capital wise if you're Buffalo? Well, it worked out for both. And by the way, Minnesota got Justin Jefferson out of that deal, and it really did help Josh Allen and Buffalo take another step, no doubt. He, he had 127 catches, 1,500 yards his first year, eight touchdowns. Then he goes 1,210 touchdowns. Then he goes 1,400, 11 touchdowns. Then he goes 1,100 this year, eight touchdowns. So, I mean, he's had six consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. He's on a Mike Evans path, really, yeah. at what he's been able to do. He's got 127 catches, 103 catches, 108 catches, 107 catches. He's got 29, 37 touchdowns in the last four years in Buffalo. And he's got a terrific – young quarterback to play with. Now, the question they have to ask themselves in Houston, are we getting some of that still? Like, how much is left? The guy has now played nine years in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And you can be 31, 32 and still get it done. I'm not predicting that he won't. And they also have to ask, is there any downside of, okay, he's been an unhappy guy, both stops in his career at times. Yeah. Yeah. Will the change of scenery be really good this year? My guess is this is like a two-year type of thing for them in their mind. Get them another couple of years with this group of talent that they have and with C.J. Stroud and help them out. So, yeah, listen, I, I'm not, I think it's a bold move. I think it's a good move. They have a ton of money right now to, to play with, still left over. And they add to a team that looks really good right now. They continue to add. Um, and – I will go back to what I said to Doug Peterson at the owners' meetings, to you guys a lot. It is an arms race right now in the NFL to get weapons for your quarterback. And so hats off to Houston because they found weapons in the draft, and now they're even adding to them with what they're bringing in here. Um, with uh, Who they bring in at running back? Uh, uh, Joe, Mixon. Yeah, Joe Mixon. So they brought in Joe Mixon. And, I mean, yep. they look really good on paper. But I do think, the way the NFL works, I do think they're taking a little risk with the Mixon and Diggs move, too. I don't think these are slam dunk moves. Those are aging players. I mean. They're aging players now. And you never know. You just, they did re-sign Schultz, too, who's a very effective player. I think people leave him out at the tight end spot. They don't talk about him enough. But, yeah, here's go defend this, Ryan Nielsen and the Jags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to you. I mean, yeah, are you taking a risk? Absolutely. But I think you have a team in Houston who looks at the big picture that you beat Cleveland in the playoffs. Obviously, you kind of got manhandled a little bit by the Baltimore Ravens. They ran the ball down your throat. You, you, you addressed that a little bit in terms of bringing some guys in on defense. And you have a quarterback who showed all promise to be the next big thing. 
So now you upgrade. Well, one would say you upgrade that quarterback position by giving him a better run game with Joe Mixon, by giving him Stephon Diggs. It's just if I'm a Texans fan, and then I get you know the salary cap and like that, yada yada. If I'm a Texans fan, I'm celebrating. I'm I'm happy. You should be. Uh, you, you should be really excited for your team because you have a quarterback who just got another weapon, and and, and that's what we're talking about here in Jacksonville. We got Gabe Davis. Okay, you know. We're a little excited, I guess, for that. But it's not Stefan Diggs. We'll see how the draft shakes out. But this is this is taking care of your quarterback. Yeah, it is. This is this is giving him all the tools that you need to succeed. I hope we're taking notes. Yeah, I, I think um, Nick Casario and, and company have done a really good job. They hit a home run with the head coach, and then they hit a home run with C.J. Stroud in year one. They hit a home run moving up and being very aggressive, uh, getting Will Anderson. We just spent the last half hour talking about that, and then this thing breaks. Uh, I'm a, are you surprised at all? Before I get to how this could impact the Jags, are you surprised at all the Bills kind of – I mean, did the Bills just need a dance partner because they left well, them in the AFC? I think this the, is a team that you're going to compete against in the, to go to like the, a Super Bowl. I think the Bills team. have a plan. Like whether it's drafting somebody, I don't know. If T, I, I don't know. Might be T. Higgins. Like I think the Bills have a plan here. Yeah. Like the, listen, you wouldn't give – you wouldn't lose Gabe Davis and then trade away Stephon Diggs. If you didn't have a plan, they they know something. Well, yeah, the, the, the plan could be. I, I'm not even talking about what they do. I'm talking about they just gave away one of their star players to a team that they might contend with. Sure, in the AFC. because they have a plan is what I'm saying. Well, that's fine to have the plan, but why wouldn't you try to get him to the NFC? Does this say this was oh, the best? Oh, maybe this was the the best offer. Maybe the only suitor. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, again, I think Diggs Diggs has been unbelievable. I do think he comes with some stuff now, though. And, and you've got a young quarterback. You've got a young football team. What's the impact? We've seen that in Jacksonville now. The impact on young talent when you get – and I'm not even calling Diggs a bad guy. I'm just saying there's stuff. There's stuff on the sideline. There's stuff in the locker room. There's a history of this stuff. So if it goes sideways for three weeks, he ain't necessarily the guy saying, let's go, guys. I got this. We got this. Mm. No, he's the guy throwing his helmet instead and complaining about not getting the football. Like yeah. That's a well, dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing, and this could be a dangerous thing in Houston because you're probably going to run the ball as well. I mean, to me, the the whole locker room antics, like, yeah, he's always been kind of that guy. You saw it in Minnesota and everything. But when they changed coordinators and they started pounding the rock a lot more, it was when he got upset. Yeah, yeah. And you, you saw it on the sidelines in every single Bills game, even when they were winning. He was upset because now he wasn't the focal point of offense anymore. And yeah. you got to share reps with, you know, Nico Collins. Like, it's not like Nico Collins is any slouch at all. So I, I'm very curious to see how he's going to be 1A and 1B because when we saw that story in Minnesota with Adam Thielen in his prime, it didn't work out so well. But once again, I think if you're CJ Stroud, you're excited for well, it. Well, not only that, they got Dell, uh, they got Diggs, they got Collins, but they, didn't they re-sign Noah Brown too? I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the nice fact things. that like Buffalo didn't even ask for a Noah Brown or anybody – like I said, they, there's a plan in place for them. So where do you where do these guys stack up now, weapons wise? Because I'm looking at you know Mixon, Diggs, Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, Dalton Schultz, and that is hard not to put in the top five. I mean, on paper, uh, I gotta believe, yeah. yeah, top five for sure. I mean, for them to just send it like they just did, I know they're taking on a ton of money, but I mean, I agree, Brent, that it's impressive, and you gotta applaud the the ballsiness or whatever you want to call it to take on the contract. But yeah, I don't know I, how listen, that doesn't make you sweat. Man. Yeah, well, hey, a, this is the luxury of having a, a quarterback on a rookie contract. Well, that's true too. Listen, they've got more. They're in a different time. They're a totally different situation than where the Jags were. Jags spent all that money in free agency, and so didn't have as much money these couple of years on the rookie contract. But l- listen, they got better around Trevor because they spent all that money. So it's not like they did it wrong. Now it just didn't work out last year because of the failure down the stretch. But this team is is positioned very nicely because they hit in the draft. They hit in the draft, and now you do have this money to try to go chase Keenan Allen late in his a uh, in his in his years. Now Diggs, see that's what's re- pretty interesting to me here is they wanted to continue to surround. I like what they're doing. We're trying to get that in Jacksonville. We're trying to say, why are these quarterbacks failing around the league? Well, you're not doing them any favors. Well, they're doing some favors now for C.J. Stroud, right? They have got to be applauded for what they're doing to help him. It looks like what 
Chicago has learned from the Justin Fields experiment is we didn't do enough to help him. So we're going to do more to help him. But what's wild to me is it's like they tried to bring in Keenan Allen. Again, long in the tooth, but still very productive receiver, can really help you out. But he's like all-world guy, all-world teammate guy, Mm -hmm. from what it sounds like in, in L.A. They tried to get him, and what I say, okay, that makes some sense. Young quarterback, young receivers, pretty young group of people. Now you come influence. Well, this guy doesn't seem like influence guy <laughs> in a positive way. It digs. Yeah. So they might have tried to get that receiver, the added weapon. They even didn't care about the expense. But it was just interesting, the dynamic that they were chasing Keenan Allen and an Eric Armstead to help maybe their locker room vibe. And they were like, okay, we, we feel like we're comfortable doing this with Diggs, even though he might – again, I'm not trying to paint Diggs as like the worst guy in the world. Um, I'm not saying you're bringing in Antonio Brown. No, okay? and, and maybe D'Amico Ryan's get the best out of him and as well. Can, I mean, yeah. D'Amico Ryan seems like a guy that, you know, the, his, his team wants to play for him. So maybe Ryan's goes, you know what? I know Diggs has had some problems in the past. He's been frustrated. I can get the best out of him. Yeah. Uh, so here, here's the deal, guys. This is what I go to. What does this do to the Jags? What are the Jags doing? We have that picture of Miller Electric, right? What are they doing? Because Indianapolis, to me, isn't a factor here. And I'm not telling you they're not a factor in the division. I'm just saying they're not a factor in this conversation. Indianapolis has Anthony Richardson coming in. They actually lose Gardner Minshew, really helped them out. They, they re-signed a lot of their players, much like the Jags did from 22 to 23. They kept what they had. They have not been super aggressive. That does not mean they don't trade up in the drafts or something like that. They do pick two spots ahead of the Jaguars. So we could see them. But at least for this conversation, they haven't been aggressive. The Tennessee Titans replaced Derrick Henry with Pollard. They brought in a new regime and a new coach. They go spend crazy money, in my opinion, to get Calvin Ridley and give Will Levis an option. Uh, there, I think they were, weren't they recently tied with somebody else? There's some conversation about them getting somebody else. Um, oh, they're going to pick seven. The, the conversation was they could get one of these receivers, mm-hmm. right? They could get a Dunze or if Harrison slips or neighbors. So they could really go add to their offense. And now you look at what Houston's doing. Houston brings in Joe Mixon, more proven guy. Their running game has actually been good the last couple of years anyway, but they can continue it with Mixon. Uh, they added some defensive guys. They lost out on some players like Keenan Allen and Armstead, but now they bring in, uh, obviously, uh, Stephon Diggs. That makes them look really potent on, on offense. Does this now force the Jags' hand to keep up with the aggression? I've been asking this question for a lot over the last month. Are the Jags aggressive? Are they being aggressive? All signs point to them being aggressive here. Looks like their chips are in. Asked Doug Peterson last week. He said, well, our chips are always in. I felt like saying, yeah, but sometimes the chips are in a lot more, right? (laughs) I mean, that is true. Sometimes they're in a lot more. Is this going to make the Jags more motivated? And maybe they already were to go get one of those top receivers, to go even revisit a trade for Brandon Ayuk or a T. Higgins, because of now in a response of what the rest of the division is doing, specifically Houston, but I would say even Tennessee. I mean, is it going to change? Listen, if Stefan Diggs going to the Houston Texans is the reason why now you have to get more aggressive in helping out Trevor Lawrence, then what are we doing here? Like, no, uh, the, the, this shouldn't affect the decision at all. The, the, there should be a plan in place already, regardless of what happened today or not. Yeah, yeah I, and I think there was, Austin. I'm not saying this was, uh, this was reactionary. I'm just saying, is it more motivation to do it? Like, I, my opinion is they have a plan, the Jags. We have discussed their plan. We have tried to sit at the table and said, hey, this is what we would do. We think this is a great time to be aggressive. Started the show today with, I think we're on the same page as GM Austin, GM Hamby, GM Brent, right? We're in the same boat. We think receiver is a priority. We think being aggressive and even trading up for receiver isn't a bad move. Mm -hmm. We also talked a lot about Brock Bowers yesterday to help out that offense. Like these are things that we're kind of, let's just assume that's what they're talking about too. I would say now if we have this discussion again after the show today and we're sitting there and we're going through everything, it's like, hey, let's pick up that phone again and maybe try Ayuk. Let's not risk. We need somebody. Like we can control this better if we go call San Francisco up or if we call Cincinnati up instead of, there might be five or six teams, including now the Buffalo Bills, trying to trade up to number eight with the Atlanta Falcons to go get neighbors. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm not saying you're going to just – it changes your plan. I'm just saying it maybe expedites your plan. 
mm-hmm. or makes you a little bit more aggressive in your planning. Yeah, I mean, literally. So the only way, once again, here's where I'm coming from. Diggs was never on the table for the Jaguars. Like, I don't think they ever pondered getting stuff on Diggs here. No. So, like, that doesn't affect you. So no. then how does it affect you as a franchise? Well, it can affect you in terms of do the Bills trade up now to get their guy? We can say that, but we know how this draft could shake out. Like, receivers could be very, very top heavy, especially the first three, right? Do they have enough to trade up? Possibly, but they still have to find a suitor. And they have to find a suitor who's not trying to get a wide receiver. So to me, to let go of your number one receiver, the guy who kind of made Josh Allen Josh Allen for a while, leads me to believe that there's more of a plan in terms of either a T. Higgins or Brandon Ayuk. Because that's a sure thing. You don't just let your one receiver go that helped out Josh Allen on a whim, on a hope. They might not like him either. Okay, but you may not like him, but then how does it help Josh Allen? Like, What do you think Josh Allen's thinking right now? Yeah, I get it, man. But- Who's he throwing to, Brent? I, I, who, who, who are the Bills wide receivers? Yeah, I saw the list. It's I seriously funny. don't know. I, I can't name sure, anybody. Shakur or something? Oh, there we go. Oh, Khalil Shakur. Tupac? Sure. <laughs> who? <laughs> Tupac Shakur? Okay, who else? No, I'm just kidding. So Shakur's actually a pretty good slot yeah, guy. Up, but he's, he's a slot guy. I know. I, I think um, – I, I do think sometimes you try to shed players that are not – like, listen, the Jags eventually got rid of Jalen Ramsey. Did they replace him? Did they have a plan to replace him? No. Well, I think C.J. Henderson was that plan. I was like, I, I guess. So they traded up to plan. get him. They, they thought that was the plan, no? I mean, I thought the I think the plan wasn't to get C.J. Henderson the moment they traded him. The plan was to get draft capital and then figure out a guy to replace. You know, well, they traded him in, like, October. Okay. You know what I'm saying? No, so, I'm saying when Jalen Ramsey left, they traded to get C, like they, they traded up to get C.J. Henderson. I, I get it. That was a yeah. move that was made six months later. Okay, but, like, that was still... That was it. Yeah, the, I mean, the move was to get rid of Ramsey. Correct. To get capital back as long as you could because Ramsey wasn't going to work in the room and everywhere else. Yeah. My point is, you could still be getting rid of Diggs for monetary reasons and also attitude reasons, okay. chemistry reasons, and then fortify your plan. Like, I, I just don't know if the next domino, like, I don't know if we're going to see the Bills in three days now trade for Higgins or Ayuk. Okay. Well, then if that's they the better ca- have a plan to some kind, but their plan well, could involve the draft. It could involve a but, lot of different. Once things. again, well, you have to get a top three receiver. How, how are you going to justify getting like even Brian Thomas Jr. to replace Stephon Diggs? Well, maybe Josh Allen hates him. Okay, all right. That's Josh justification Allen hates him. enough. Okay. Like I don't know. I'm not, I'm not putting words in my. Okay. In my okay. Mouth. Well, then Just Josh Allen, it. have fun with who you got then. If if you wanted Stefan Diggs got you got your wish, then have fun with what you got. But you know, I mean, this list sometimes is addition by subtraction is what I'm talking about. Okay, could that be the Buffalo stance? I don't know. Do they now have to do more wide receiver? Yes. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, it's an interesting thought. Now, right? There's all this cornerback talk. Does in a backward way, cornerback become more of a priority for the Jags now? Oh, here we go. Or. <sighs> Is it more just keep piling up on the offensive side and let's outscore you? We're playing in the old Big 12 and, and, and the Mountain West, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, Brenton Austin show. Uh, there's that lineup now for the Houston Texans. They are the division champs. They are the chaser, um, and they are going to have a huge target, not just from the Jags, the Titans, and the Colts, by the way. I think the rest of the AFC. Uh, they are going to be a sexy pick now to be the AFC representative or at least a big-time contender. Uh, in the AFC for the Super Bowl. How will they handle all that? How will that all mesh together? And what does it look when uh, the real games start in September? It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who is coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. 
$50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part, they did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings Dot com today for your free quote. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. When strong storms threaten and your safety is on the line, nothing beats accuracy. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish and the First Alert Weather Team. Your safest place to be during a storm is Action News Jacks. I'm Action Sports Jack Stuart Weber. Please join me and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in Northeast Florida for our annual Take Steps Walk right here at Memorial Park on April 13th. The event is dedicated to finding cures and raising awareness for digestive diseases. Join us by registering now at actionnewsjacks.com. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. In March, Alive Credit Union was back for the sixth time as a sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event was over the weekend downtown. It was a good turnout with everyone taking steps for a good cause. And Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh emceed it. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at alivecu.coop. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, the Burrish blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. You know what's wild about this whole Stefan Diggs move to Houston? And this shows you, to me, that they, they don't want him there. They just flat out don't want him there. Because if, if some of these reports are right about the number, this, this deal makes no sense at all. Okay. So here it is. And it's going to be a lot of numbers, so digest it. We'll try, I'll do my best to take it slow. Numbers aren't easy to comprehend sometimes. Diggs had a basically $28 million salary cap number with the Bills. All right? $31 million in dead money because of the trade. 
So the Bills are still on the hook for 31 dead million dead money. The Bills are losing $3 million in actual 2024 cap space, according to this guy. Okay. Diggs is under contract to the Texans through 2027 for $75 million. They've got him under contract now for, 20, for three more years. Only $3.5 million is guaranteed after this year. Hmm. So, like, there's really not even, is there, am I missing something? Is there not even that much of a financial benefit in 2024? If they hung on to him for another year, they would only owe him three and a half million of guaranteed money. They could cut him next year anyway. Yeah. Unless they're just trying to get out from the dead stuff now so they don't have to carry that over into next year. They're only getting like a second and a fifth back. Oh, no, no, they're not just even getting a second. No, they're getting like a fifth. Right? Fifth and oh, a sixth. Fifth and a sixth. Yeah, but they gave up a fourth. Oh, they gave up? Uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Te- te- uh, it's, it's, it's basically is a second round. Second round pick. They got a second yeah. round pick. So they get a second round pick. And I mean, this screams, we, didn't, we don't want him here. And you brought up a tweet. You saw the tweet last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have no idea if this is like a reactive tweet, a timely tweet. I even asked you, hey, go ahead yeah, and read basically, the tweet. I mean, I don't have it in front of me. Just basically, Robert Griffin was bringing up the point that Stefan Diggs really helped um, Josh Allen. You know, in terms of being a next level quarterback. And somebody commented, I think it was just a random person, said, This is true, but Josh Allen would still be good without Stefan Diggs. And then Stefan Diggs said, You sure? at the bottom of it. And this was last night. So maybe he knew something, maybe caught wind of something, maybe it was coincidence. Take it probably yeah, want. That's what I was curious about because I, I asked him, that was my first question. It's like, Well, does he know that this is in the works and about to happen? Yeah. Or was this like, All right, we're done with you, dude, on the Bills? I mean, you're gonna fight, you're gonna let somebody go over a tweet. I don't think that Come would on. be it, right? It's just like, is it the end? Is it like we're not gonna? Does that? Did they view that as a shot at their quarterback? I mean, maybe, man. But I watched Johnny Kangakwe go toe to toe with the the, <laughs> the owner's son, and he was, you know, like, come on. I don't, I don't think it was because of the tweet. Maybe there's more behind I, the I, scenes. I agree with you. I'm just. But. I think it's more likely that he knew a trade was on the horizon. Like, this thing was in the works last night. Sure. Um, I don't think – I mean, maybe it's coincidence, but I don't necessarily yeah. think it's coincidence. Uh, all right, so now all you corner people now are really puffing your chest out as my guess. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, there's the Robert uh, Griffin third tweet, and then Diggs down there, you sure? Does Josh benefit from having a top-tier receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. And Diggs said, are you sure? All right, what about corner? Does this flip what about your – the, do the Jags now all of a sudden have to get better at corner? Well, that's what everybody's saying. For, for the rest of the AFC, for the, for the Bengals, for the Texans, for maybe if the Titans go get another receiver, everybody loading up, the Jets, the, um, the Ravens, you name it. Like everybody's – again, it's an, it's an arms race, so the way to combat the arms race might be to play defense against the arms race. Every single thing I've seen on Twitter in the last 15 minutes has been, oh, well, now you can all but guarantee Jags corner at 17. <sighs> Just take care of Trevor Lawrence, please. <laughs> it's, it's not hard. I don't, I don't know how many times i got to say it. Like, yeah. Do you have, I mean, would a corner be nice? Sure, right? It's going to be a lot, of, a lot of people to stop now in Houston, I feel like. And absolutely, you got to have somebody that comes in there and does their thing. But and I'm, not, I'm not trying to say fight fire with fire. I'm just trying to say do the best thing for your team. And that's taking care of Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, honestly, I don't care. Like, if I'm the Jaguars, I don't care what, what, about Stefan Diggs right now. I can't. Like, I have to focus on my own team. Yeah, I like that. I, I like what you're saying. Um, I do think it goes back to our conversation about, I think this may motivate you to be even more aggressive, even if you were planning on it. It just might, motiv- you know, make, make it from an eight to a nine <laughs> on your motivational schedule, uh, calendar or ladder or whatever it is. But, I raised the question because Hamby's not wrong. I think we got a lot of people. First of all, you have to go back to the combine. When the combine was happening, everybody had the jack for whatever. I, I still, I was there, and I still don't fully understand it. But whatever was said at the combine, everybody left the combine. Is like they're getting a corner. Yeah, it didn't make sense. And I was like, I don't get this. Mm-hmm. So okay, fine. You believe that? Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not saying telling you I'm right. Well, then they go into free agency. They have Tyson Campbell, obviously, on his last year. They go get Ronald Darby. It's not like they paid $40 million for Ronald Darby, but they definitely paid a few bucks for him, right? 
I don't think they're paying what was, what was that deal? Five, six, seven million dollars a year, something like that. Yeah. I don't feel like they're paying that kind of money to be a a depth player. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and here's what I don't understand about Ronald Darby. Like, is he is he and obviously he's not a good player? Well, like he started yeah, in Baltimore. Yeah, two years, eight and a half mil, four point two five. I mean, that per. is a pretty modest deal by today's standards of any deal. Okay. So when they made that deal, I mean, I think we thought they had a starter in this defense, uh, that kind of a style of a player that can play press, right? Which Nielsen likes. I do say the contract doesn't necessarily negate you going to get a better player than Ronald Darby. I mean, that that certainly could add to um, your depth, but it would just seem like a very weird signing, two years, eight and a half million, to say, yeah, we're going to replace you in the draft. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. I know, but if you if it was a if it was eight million a year, that would make you feel better about Nick taking corner, or that would make well, you feel worse. So, but since it's four point two five a year, now it's like okay, well, if he has to become our third corner, well, so now we have to like, so we see the contract. It's like okay, well, we're not paying him enough, so we better replace him with somebody. We're going to pay more. Like why is that a thing? The guy started on a top five defense last year. I'm with you. He was a cornerback. I'm saying top from, five defense, Baltimore Ravens, but now he's not good enough because we have Stephon Diggs. Now we got to shift. Yeah, help, help me make sense of this. Well, I I don't um, I don't know that doesn't make sense. I agree with you. By the way, I'm I'm on your side here, but I'm just trying to think of the other side of it. And and I will say, like you had an 11 million dollar a year corner that you let go in Darius, Darius. Williams. If you had a ten, eleven million dollar a year corner at that spot, you're not going to replace him. Like you're not going to go sit there and and let that guy sit on the bench at four and a half million or four point two five million a year. I mean, you you can try to upgrade and still justify it. Like you you can, I think. Um, I don't think that says okay, he's our guy. Now, do I believe he's the guy? Yeah, I do. I I think that'd be a very silly. It's it's a silly signing. If your plan was to get him and spend four and a half million dollars a year for him to sit on the bench and come in just in case somebody gets hurt, yeah, <laughs> that seems that's what the fourth, fifth, sixth round of the drafts for. That's why you have Gregory Jr. and uh, Buster Brown. Like that's why you have those guys, right? Mm-hmm. Now, do they feel confident with those guys? I don't know. Do they feel like they have to add depth regardless? Um, did they band aid this thing up in case? a corner that they like doesn't fall to them or isn't in a spot. That's part of the things you do in free agency too. So I, I can't sit here and say there's absolutely no way they would take corner. But I also will sit here and say that I like what you just said. I'm worried about myself. I'm not worried about what the Houston Texans are doing. And do I have to keep an eye on it? Yeah, probably. But I'm not, wor- I'm not going to change my plan. And so sitting in this seat, I told you in February, I don't think they're picking corner. I told you in March, I don't think they're picking corner. And I'm going to sit here at 17 and tell you in April, I don't think they're picking corner. Oh, they're picking corner now. <laughs> <sighs> you had to reiterate, didn't you? I'm just telling you. Just, you. You, you, just couldn't, you, know, you just couldn't keep it hush-hush. No, oh, great. Save that audio, Hamby. I'll mark it down. I it'll, also, it'll be I, a real. I, I, let me ask you this, too. The other thing about corner, that if everybody wants corner here, is there a game changer at corner? It's one thing if you're getting Jalen Ramsey at corner. At 17, you've got like four guys to pick from. One weighs a buck 60. Mm-hmm. Wiggins. And I don't even know which one's the best one. Like, we can have 16 different opinions on this. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I would, if we're going to go get a guy at corner, I'd like him to be like a stud and know it. Yeah. Rather than have like various opinions all over the board. Yeah. That doesn't make me feel better. Well, keep in mind, too, Jeff Okuda was supposed to be like the next big thing, and that Absolutely. didn't really work out in Detroit either. Corners have been a major first now, round injuries, miss overall. Injuries do take a place in that, too. So I shouldn't go the last few fair. years. The corner's been a miss in a lot of spots. Yeah. I think secondary guys have been a miss at, at times. I mean, I'm sure you can find every position to be a miss. But yeah, I, I, I do think we're seeing this trend now that the Jags are going to take corner to combat this. I don't think that's it, man. I think we're in a net. You have, like you said, you're a quarter, you have a quarterback. You go put weapons around him and say, we're better on offense than you're better on offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch this. I mean, do we think Trevor Lawrence is better than CJ Stroud? Are we still talking about, he's the franchise guy, right? And Trevor yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. So let's go prove that then, please. 
Exactly. I'm with you on that because here's the other thing about it, Austin. Um, it's not just that you think you have Trevor and the quarterback and you'll take your guy. And maybe the rest of the league right now is going to take C.J. Stroud. They probably would. But we're taking our guy. You like your receiving core and your weapons on offense right now. I think actually they like, and they would say this, I don't know if you like because no fan ever does like the offensive line, but they might like their offensive line better than Houston likes their offensive line. Mm -hmm. I mean, Houston offensive line isn't built like the Colts or the Dallas Cowboys of years past. And I'll go back to the biggest offseason move the Jaguars can make. I think they got a better offensive mind. Well, they haven't made it head yet. coach. Well, let's, yeah, let's make sure <laughs> so he's calm. The gun here. Yeah, that's let's... still the move that can happen, that should happen, that would make, in my opinion, the biggest difference on this offense. Uh, obviously, receiver could make a big <laughs> difference. Too. Watch the Jaguars announce that today, then. That's how they're going to counter the <laughs> Stephon Diggs news. That would be amazing. Breaking talking... news. Doug Peterson announces he's putting the glasses back on. We're calling awesome. the plays. This is starting to turn into Red Sox Yankees a little bit if we yeah. get that. I like it. We hang our banner on that tweet or that announcement. Of this show. Man. I just, like I said, to me, it's almost a double kill because Houston gets better, but then Houston could obviously, I mean, not Houston, but then Buffalo could obviously trade up too as well and take away maybe one of those receivers that you were coveting. It could, listen, I, I do think, forget about the, the Bills doing that. They added, or, or the Bills take Ayuk or somebody or T. Higgins. and Well, you just put another team in the mix. But I think we already did this. We know there's a lot. That's what this was the first hour of our show today was the conversation of listen, we can we can like the idea of the Jags being aggressive. We can make the trade happen on paper. We can discuss it here in front of a microphone. The reality of it happening is way more difficult than anybody wants to admit. And the reason why is because it's hard to dance and and do a deal anyway. Anybody ever bought a house? <laughs> you know, sometimes that negotiation can be pretty tough. It's not easy. And you still they want to sell the house, you want to buy the house, and it's still not easy. Yeah. So now you add to it, you know what really is hard about buying a house? When you got a market where there's like 15 offers in, <laughs> then it's really hard to buy a house. Well, the receiver position, I'm going to use Atlanta at number eight. That or I think a receiver, one of those top three guys, will still be there at number eight. I'll use Atlanta as an example. Say they want out. They can go get some more capital. They, they can really benefit their organization by moving out. How many offers are they going to have on that pick? Yeah. How many people are calling them? Probably five. At a minimum. Yeah. But, and, and here's the other thing. It's not just for receiver. You could be looking at a team like the Raiders or, or Vikings to move up and go get quarterback, the fourth best quarterback, or a, a J.J. McCarthy or somebody like that, even that late. Broncos, too. Broncos, because there's going to be some jockeying for that second-tier quarterback. So now that slides receiver down, all the other stuff. But this is a lot trickier, and so I guess you're right. The Bills now get thrown into that mix, too, where maybe they've got some capital and ammunition to be able to use. That certainly helps. But I just think there are a lot of teams motivated by receiver. I think Kansas City over the weekend became more motivated by receiver. Have to be. Right? And they probably already were motivated by receiver. Uh, the Bills – a top team, and then we've been down the list. There's, I think you can make the case Indianapolis at 15. I think you can make the case for just about every team ahead of the Jags and about another five teams behind the Jags. That receiver is a good way to go to keep up with what everybody's doing around the National Football League. And that's why I think I'd be surprised if the Jags are in that mindset, the mindset we hope they're in when it comes to receiver, if they don't pick the phone up and call San Francisco or Cincinnati and at least feel that thing out and revisit you, it again. I think you're going to start to see some smoke on Ayuk and Higgins. Maybe not just related to the Jags, but you watch the national guys over the next couple of weeks. I guarantee you, maybe in the next couple of days, there will be a lot more of those rumors about those guys coming up. And, and if that's the case, then, then listen, if you're Jacksonville and you want to go with a sure thing, then go with a sure thing. and Go get Brandon Ayuk or go get T. Higgins. You know, Because you're not sure how this draft is going to shake out. You have to do something, though. And, like, this is the beauty of the NFL. Like, we make it so hard sometimes with the X's and O's and how do you build a roster, how do you build a team, how do you be successful. The Houston Texans were 3-13 and in 2022. They get their quarterback, they get him weapons, and now guess what? You win a division, and now all of a sudden, you got to be one of the favorites, I would say, to go to the AFC Championship. It's not complicated. 
So there's all people in the comments and all people on Twitter saying, well, cornerback now. Got to get a cornerback. Got to gotta try to combat Houston. Just because you have good cornerbacks on the field doesn't mean you can go to the a Super Bowl. You can go on a playoff run. Okay? Ask the Miami Dolphins at, at cornerback how good they were. Pretty dang good when they're healthy. Did they go? No. So look at what you have to do to win a Super Bowl or to go on a long run. You get the quarterback. Trevor Lawrence, we think, is the quarterback, right? So the, the hard part's done. You have the quarterback. Congratulations. You won the lottery. You have the quarterback. Now get the weapons. Yeah, they got to go do it. We'll see if they can do it. They couldn't keep Ridley. Um, and now you got to be able to pull the trigger and, and uh, get the job done if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Christian Kirk says, hang on now. By the way, uh, this is a consecutive tweet by Christian Kirk. He had earlier said, man, why every time a move happens in the NFL, I catch strays? <laughs> so somebody must have been bringing up Kirk's name. Uh, but I thought that was kind of funny. Um, I don't know if he thought it was as funny, but I did. Um, I, I'm sure he's having fun with it if he's tweeting about yeah, it. Yeah, and uh, where's the faith? We're going to lay down before we uh, even take a snap is his latest. And I'm with him here. Like, I, I get the reaction. I get what you look like on paper. I also think the Jags would be four-time Super Bowl champs if you won everything in February, March, and April. I mean, we've, we've gotten excited about off-seasons before around here, too. It's a different animal when you get there. And... I don't think this is automatic for the – I think the Houston Texans have legitimate question marks too. Uh, I think their offensive line potentially could be a question mark, but I think it's more how are they going to handle the first-place schedule? How are they going to handle being the target? How are they going to handle when uh, Stephon Diggs does raise a fuss about the amount of targets because it's going to Nico Collins and Noah Brown and others, <laughs> Tank Dell? Like, yeah. I, I think those are real things. I think we see that in the NFL every year. That doesn't mean they can't overcome them, by the way. I just don't think you win the game on paper in fantasy football here in the NFL. You might win your league, but you don't win in fantasy football um, on Sundays. And I think we've we've seen that over the years so much that I'm kind of with Kirk on this one. Uh, that uh, hey, y'all had us in the playoffs too at eight and three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, we did too. Yeah, <laughs> and look what happened. But I mean, interesting reaction. Yeah. But not surprising reaction either. But to be fair, I would much rather be complaining about, man, who, what's going to happen if you don't get enough targets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in your wide receiving core compared to, do we have enough to compete? And that's what this is. I mean, does Trevor have enough? Maybe the things he does, you know how I feel about it. Houston has enough. That's all I was just say about it. Well... I'm just I'm, I'm depressed. I don't know. I don't know why I'm so bummed. Yeah, I don't know because, either. That's why you guys are like you guys are both a little like well because here's the thing, Brent. Because the Houston Texans were the laughing stock a couple years ago, yeah. and now look what we're talking about them with. Like they turned around in literally a year. Listen, they've done a great job. They've done a great job. Uh, you, and, I, they, and I don't like them, <laughs> but I'm giving I them the props. It. I get it. Uh, listen, they've. Yeah, that's the main thing. Is we just it's not about you know me being pissed about it isn't because I think that they've auto- automatically won the division and the Jags have no shot. It's just I hate the Texans and I don't like seeing them get better. I mean, it's literally me being pissed off. Literally Lovey Smith won a game. You fired him because of it. <laughs> they were a dumpster fire. Yeah, we yeah. thought okay, it's going to take some time to rebuild. You bring in a coach and you win the division the first year. Yeah, and, and listen, some teams get – listen, the Indianapolis Colts got lucky when they lost for a year and got Andrew Luck, right? I mean, I do think teams get fortunate. I also think I gotta, you got to give a lot of credit to Houston. I think what they're doing here is is smart. They've, they've made some really good moves. They're taking advantage of those moves. They're taking advantage of the money they have. They've been a player – they talk about aggressive. They are in a super aggressive mode instead of just standing pat right now. We thought they could get Christian Wilkins and Saquon Barkley in free agency. Well, they didn't. But they still filled gaps, and then they also tried to get Keenan Allen and Eric Armstead. I remember now, Jags did wrestle Armstead away from them. They almost lost them. To, <laughs> and that's a big move for the Jags, I, I believe. I think that was a monster move for Jacksonville to get them on, on that side of the ball. Um, but you got to applaud what they're doing. And, and if you're a Texans fan, I don't know how you can't. And I get a little bit of the angst. I understand that. Uh, I just – I think – I feel better about the Jags because I, I continue to say this. If Doug and Trevor are there together, I think you have a chance. Do you have to do more? Yes. 
Do you have to hit on this draft? Absolutely. That first round, you have to make an impact with that play. Do you have a good team right now? I think you do. I mean, I'm not going to stop saying that I think the Jags roster is pretty good. I came out of free agency saying it. Just because now that team just went and got Stefan Diggs and looks better on paper. I'm not going to say the Jags don't look okay on paper or good on paper. Could they be better? Yeah. I think there are some teams that are built. Listen, the Dallas Cowboys have been built good on paper for the last, like, five years. And they've won crap. They've had success, though. They have had success. I think yeah. Houston's going to be a fact. See, I actually like this, and I understand why people don't. This sounds goofy, but from a sports standpoint, I think the division is going to be really fun and really good. And in sports, what that does is that elevates your level of play. I think it's going to elevate the Jags' level of play. I think it's going to make – there's no sneaking around here. There's no standing pat. There's no falling in love with yourself in this division. Now, would I rather it be the Patriots just go romp the AFC East for 12 years? Eh, I get it. That ain't it. I mean, the AFC is a beast. The AFC South has turned into one. But I do think the Jags are part of that conversation and can be. Yeah. You know, so, like, that's that's why I'm not like, oh, my gosh. I just think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be hard. I think I think you split with Houston, and, and that's what you got to plan to do probably for the next handful of years. That's the way the division's be, uh, built. It wasn't that way. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I I say you just cancel all the the, the new stadium plans and put that money to get uh, <laughs> Justin Jefferson. And Justin Jefferson. That's, go, just forget the new stadium, all right? Buses, sorry, you guys got the park on the outside. You can't go underground. <laughs> not going to happen. Sorry, Jags fans, we're not going to have shade. Not a big deal. Let's get Justin Jefferson. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's Jefferson no Jefferson. What, what, oh, let's you, go. We, yeah, let's go. That would be I'll fun. take Jefferson over shade right now. I think it's so funny around here that for years and years, we're like, Jags won the off season, but don't do anything. Jags won the off season. Don't do anything. But man, do we love to, to, we love that off season. Like we want, um, now we want to move. Like, this really does feel to me. I grew up watching Red Sox Yankees and trade deadline and moves into the offseason free agency, the two teams that were spending money. And it's like, okay, you go get that guy. I'm going to get this guy. Or you're in the mix. Sometimes they, those two teams would bid on a guy just to inflate the number so the other guy would have to pay more to get it. Like, that's the real kind of stuff that happened in, in the Yankees Red Sox. I feel like right now, and maybe this is why I'm having fun with it. That it's kind of like that in the AFC South right now. I feel like people have their foot on the gas, which yeah. doesn't always happen. A lot of times you stand pat. Mm-hmm. This organization has stood pat. I wouldn't say overall this organization, but an aggressive organization. Mm-hmm. And maybe some of that feels like they've missed so many times that that doesn't equate to aggressive. But I got, I mean, Houston's on the gas right now, man. And and the Jags feel like they've been on the gas this offseason so much so that I still think they've they're gonna hit it another gear. Yeah. And and Tennessee actually is way more aggressive than I thought. I thought they'd be slow build. Yeah, I mean they're yeah. I mean well, well, they did that. Once again, move? but the the quarterback's a question mark, right? And you're not gonna be established if you have a quarterback. Simple Indianapolis as that. is really the only one sitting there in cruise control still right now. Yeah, I mean, they resigned a lot of their guys. They obviously like their quarterback. I mean, he showed some glimpses, just got to stay healthy. Yeah, so but listen, it's a, I, I do think – see, I like seeing a tweet from Kirk because I think this is going to build in the ja- – I, I think the Jags are going to be ready. I think the Jags, for whatever reason, I, I hope we get to a point where the Jags are in a front-running situation and handle that very well. But I think right now this is like the better – Laying in the weeds a little bit is not a bad way to be in the off season, especially no. instead of everybody patting you on the back because it, it puts more work in. I mean, that's just that's competitive nature, that's human nature, and I, I think the Jags are going to have a really good off season and be ready to go. Does that translate to Sundays? Who the hell knows? I don't know, um, but I think you when when I see Christian Kirk making seventeen, twenty mil, whatever he's making, and that dude is still motivated every week. By the fact that he doesn't get any respect, I love that. Yeah. I love guys playing with a chip, even when they're making a good amount of money. I love the fact that Trevor has a chance to hold a lottery ticket this year. I, I, I like what these guys are playing for. Someone had an interesting comment. It's the last one. 
I'm in favor of signing Josh Allen to a huge deal, but I'd rather give that money to Jefferson than Lawrence and make Josh play on the tag for two seasons. That's from Duval Jags. Brent? Yeah, I don't I don't know if um I, I don't know if you need to do that. I don't know how that works. Because like, I mean, were, were you saying that when we had uh, if we raised the question for Ayuk? Well, he's making twenty five million dollars. We weren't saying, okay, you can't pay Josh. Yeah, but Justin Jefferson's gonna get a lot more than Ayuk's gonna okay, get. It's, but it's like thirty million dollars. I mean, 30, I mean, theoretically, Jefferson will be the highest paid wide receiver in the, in the NFL. Absolutely. So what are we talking? I about? think didn't they say a deal was on the table or something, or maybe they thought it was gonna reach like one hundred seventy five million or something like that. Um, listen, so I, the, I just don't think is, you have to do one or the other. Okay, well, if this is the case, Brent. You can't pay Justin Jefferson. You can't pay Josh Allen. You can't pay Trevor Lawrence. Like I, I mean, I, maybe you can't. I feel like you can't do that. I know it doesn't feel like you can, but I think you can. Okay. And and the spe- you're not going to play Trevor this year, so I think you really can. Okay. Um. I, I thought what you were going to bring up, and I, I didn't know where the context of that was. Is, would you be willing to deal a player, like Josh, to go get? Justin Jefferson? A guy like Justin <laughs> oh, Jefferson. Oh, man. Because now you, you obviously make that more appetizing for a team like Minnesota, and you also now don't – maybe you don't have to deal with as much, trade as much draft capital, et cetera, et cetera, um, and the money does become a little more spread out. Now you're not paying Josh on that side of the ball. By the way, I'm, I'm not endorsing this. I'm just asking. Yeah, you're asking. I love Josh Allen. Love what he's done for the Jaguars. I love what he brings to the city. But Trevor Lawrence is the most important player on this team. And if you get the chance to get the best wide receiver in the NFL, well, 1A, one 1B, one because Tyreek Hill is pretty dang good too. Yeah, I do that. I don't feel good about saying it. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, let's go to the kids' corner. What are the kids saying? Run that question by me one more time. Kids' corner. You get a trade. Josh Allen to Minnesota, who was oh, trying man. to replace Daniel Hunter for Justin Jefferson. Straight up. Wow, it's probably. I mean, not, it, it probably will. We'll, we'll throw like a, like a yeah, probably second, a third, or something in there as well. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Huh. I'm keeping Josh Allen. Okay. Well, it's interesting. Like, it, Brent, I mean, personally, you're not getting off the hook. What are you yet. doing? I, I wouldn't. You wouldn't do it? No. You wouldn't get... Oh, wow. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. Please. First of all, I think you're... Like, you're fine. But I'm getting tired of you saying... Ending every sentence with... Because of Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, well, like, okay. Well, 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 first of all, keep in mind... I wasn't the one that was in the bar wearing a Jets jersey celebrating <laughs> him coming here. <laughs> That's true. That, that wasn't uh, me. That was you. Um, so all of a sudden, we're not on Team Trevor anymore, or what? No, I Because I thought he Trevor. was supposed to be the guy. But that can't be the reason you give up an elite okay. pass rusher. You have Trayvon Walker. We just did this an hour ago on the show. We just said there were a dozen maybe pass rushers, and there are like 40 receivers. What? You can get receiver. You can't get pass rusher. But we just talked about unicorns. Did we not? He is a unicorn. Okay, then. There's a difference. But pass rusher in general is a unicorn. The Jags have Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen is a unicorn in itself. They have two. Give me a wide receiver. That's all I'm going to say. Give me arguably the best wide receiver in the game. I, I, with all due respect to Josh Allen, and once again, I don't feel good about saying it, he's not the best ed- edge rusher in the league. He's not. Would the Pittsburgh Steelers right now trade – T.J. Watt, who is arguably the best? For Justin Jefferson? Yeah. No. No. Because I, I think T.J. Watt showing, like, year in and year out, the guy's had how many sacks? Like, Josh Allen has had 17.5 sacks, what, 10 in the other two years? Uh, what, 10 and a half, 17 and a half, two and a half when he got hurt. Okay. And then, like, I think uh, eight and the- Okay. No, I, I think there's a difference between T.J. Watt and oh, Josh no, I, Allen. I would, I would yeah. say so. But I, I think, like, how big is the difference? It's still maybe elite, elite, and then elite. But to know? be fair, who's the quarterback for the Steelers right now? I mean, like, Russell, Wilson, Russell yeah. but, like, is he going to be the future? Yeah, so you're not, like, trying to help out. I see what you're saying there. Um, 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye, Josh. Hello, Justin. So, okay. <laughs> and uh, Steelers don't have Trevor Lawrence in the contract here. That's that's good. Um, you know, to your point, like, could you then, like, somebody mentioned uh, Dallas Turner and Jared Verse in, in this situation, could you? This is such a pie in the sky scenario, anyway. But then you get aggressive instead of getting aggressive in the draft for receiver, you get aggressive for pass rusher, which there are less people that are going to be willing to do that. Mm-hmm. Point being, let's just say you really like Jared Verse. He's going to be picked at number 11 or 12. You go trade up to get 11 and 12, go get Verse to replace Josh. You got your receiver now, all the rest. Yeah, it's a, it's, I mean, it's a show game at that point, right? I mean, that's really it. It's what, where do you want to spend? Yeah. And I think most people would criticize the Jaguars for spending that much at wide receiver because now you're really invested in wide receiver. Okay. But – to go get the best guy in the game might not be a, a bad idea. Uh, can we keep Josh Allen and get Justin Jefferson? That's what I'm trying to say, Duval TV. I think we can, by the way. I think you could. Um, and there's no rumors out there about Justin Jefferson. No, <laughs> not at all. Just this is be, just a, a fun just exercise. Like, we're trying to trump the Houston Texans. Yes. <laughs> That's really what this is all about. Uh, let's take a time out. We come back. We'll continue to talk about what a day it's already been here on the show. Uh, a lot of football talk. All those conversations that we had lined up. Mm-hmm. That group text is useless. Oh, yeah. We just throw that sucker right out the That's window. That's why I'm then responding on it, man. We've been two hours of football. Oh, I, got, I got ghosted this morning, and now I know why. <laughs> Actually, oh, dude, I was training. Come on, Hammy. Oh, not by you. I was okay. drinking coffee. My hands okay. were full. All right. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Uh, when will the Texans line up against the Jags this football season? You know, that's about a month away from finding out the schedule, uh, which uh, is going to be always a fun day. Uh, as we map out the rest of our calendar year. Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville, Orange Park, and now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room, a full bar and menu, my favorite sushi in town, and I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet, that's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid, you against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun. It's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice. It doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked? stained or just plain ugly spartan coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous easy to clean antibacterial and slip resistant all with superior durability living in florida nearly my whole life i know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor that's why i had matt and the crew from spartan coatings transform this space and the best part they did it in one day It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provides superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings Dot com today for your free quote. I like to say everybody has a story and sometimes we are a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnik Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnik family. We purchased six different vehicles from Nimnik Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimnik Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. 
Nidnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom, meet the fantastic people, or shop online at NidnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, the Burrish blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who is coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Noon hour, ready to roll till 1 o'clock on Action Sports Jacks 24-7 on the network, actionnewsjacks.com, Action News Jacks app as well. Just click video. We are right there. So you can stream us anytime. And when you stream us, you can also watch us on Roku and Apple TV and Google TV and all the rest. So you can see us from... Your living room, if you want. You can see us from your computer at work. You can see us from your phone. And, of course, on all the social media platforms. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, the chat's been wild today. I do want to get to some of the mentions in the chat. I think we've hit some of them. Uh, but, uh, man, you guys have been popping today, even before the Houston news of getting Stefan Diggs, which is a big one. A lot of draft talk here on the day. How aggressive will the Jags get? How will they react to something like this? Do you even need to react? Do you just worry about yourself? Uh, those are all questions that we're trying to answer uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, but they ultimately will have to answer for themselves. Uh, One we question have? we got, Brent, by chance, can you kick a field goal? We might need you. <laughs> no, not the way the hamstrings are right now. Um, Over about uh, 200 comments in the chat today. Wow, how about that? Uh, I missed some earlier. Did I, if, if you get back through some of them and something, I it goes by so quick on yeah. here that I, I – I'm like, ah, man, I want to mention a few. So if you see anything, uh, make sure we bring them all, bring them up. And we like, hey, listen, sometimes the chat just chats amongst themselves. That's mm-hmm. true. Which is which is okay. Um, what is this one right here? We can't have everybody. It's all in the name of competition. Quit complaining. Uh, he's he's a, headache a headache anyway. Yeah. As soon as we lock his <clears throat> up, going to be slamming his helmet. <laughs> I like right, that. Yeah. I like that. We need a little more of that. Hopefully we play the Texans later on in the season. Where, you know, it starts going sour as opposed <laughs> yeah, to, like, week point. one. <laughs> Jags need to react. Texans are staring at 13-4. Jags are staring at 10-7 and seven at best, says Duval Jags. I, I just don't know how you – listen, good luck predicting that. I am going I'll, – I'll be impressed with the Texans when they handle their first place schedule. Who are the uh, – let's, uh, let's take a real quick look at the Houston opponents. Um, opponents in 2024. And, all right, here's who they have to play. The Ravens, the Bills, the Dolphins, the Bears, the Lions, the Colts, the Jags, the Titans, the Cowboys, 
the Packers, the Vikings, the Chiefs, the Jets, the Patriots, Colts, the Jaguars, the Titans. Mm-hmm. That ain't an easy schedule. No. You know? Um, is it? The Bills, are, is there a window closing? That, that's a really good question. Like, I feel like you could say it's closed. Yeah. Now it's like, can you reboot it? So, like, teams have – there's different ways to look at it, right? I mean, you, you, you make that little run. You can't get over the mountaintop. Okay, we got to reset this thing because the money of Diggs or having to let Mitch Morse go or a Gabe Davis go and all the – I mean, that bottom line is they were strapped for cash with the cap, and they had to reset their roster a bit. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you bring it back going? Well, you do what the Rams did. You get rid of some of that, and then you go draft really well, and you get a puka and a coup, and you, you get lucky – Right, and you yeah. find some gold mines, um, or, or just gold, and instead of mines, and uh, and and then you can reset it back again and, and make the playoffs, and maybe now go reboot it for another run. I, I don't know, by the way, if the Rams are going to do that. They lose Aaron Donald. How are you replacing that? Well, you're not. Mm-hmm. So, I, I guess the question is, when you do have the quarterback, and it looks like they've had the coach. Now, there's been some questions about that regime too in the front office, but if you have that quarterback. He can definitely help you transition quicker if you make a bunch of the right moves after that. Sure. I would say absolutely, though, the Bills' window at this rendition of the Bills is over. Yeah. Um, you know, if you think about it in the AFC, the Jets' window is now. Correct. The Bills' window, over. Patriots' window is not open. <laughs> the Not open for business. No, yeah. it isn't. No, I'm with you. I yeah. think the Dolphins... Might have missed their small window the way they stack things up. I still think it's there. You think it is? Yeah. Do you see them as a Super Bowl contender? I see them like... Being like one good team in two years. Sure. Yeah, I know. But I still... I see the Dolphins as like... They're not a tier one like Super Bowl contender, but they're just like on the verge of making a playoff run. Um, okay, let's go. The Ravens window's open, right? Yes, open for business. The Bengals? Yeah, I still think, I mean, with, with health concerns, but yeah, I think they're still open. Pittsburgh? No, I mean, Pittsburgh's, they're, they're they feel listen, very much like the Miami category to me, where it's like, okay. yeah, they can make the playoffs, but I don't see them as a deep threat. Yeah, I mean, they'll make the playoffs. Because I mean, that's what they do. They'll have a winning, right? Yeah, it's what they do. <laughs> they have one of the best coaches in the game, I think. What about the Browns, who just made the playoffs? I mean, it's hard to, to say they're not. In contention because they just went to the playoffs with Joe Flacco who came off the couch. Um, I think Houston's window's open. Obviously. Tennessee, I can't go there yet. No. Indianapolis, I'm not sure I can get there either because I just don't know enough about Anthony Richards. Got to see more. The Jags. Super Bowl window? Come on, Brent. Be realistic. Doesn't feel that way. No. They feel more in the Pittsburgh. Yeah. And Miami. Not even Miami. I think Miami's got the Jaguars beat right now. Really? I do. That's interesting. Hey, but can you decide us on Miami? How do you, I, you, uh, how do you I feel about Miami? I think the Jags are even with Miami. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm in love with Miami. Um, I mean, I, I get why you can be. I, I'm not discounting it. I'm just saying I'm not there on that regard. But that's okay. I mean, I think there was the playoffs last year. So. Uh, yeah, I, well, yeah. I think most people, if they had to choose right now, would choose the Dolphins to win their division. Still over the Jets by a hair. If I had, oh really? I think. Well, I if think, you're going to go there, then I would say they're they're open. But I don't. But playoffs is different, and I think people do see that the Dolphins struggle against good teams. I don't think that's just that's just not us thinking that. I, everybody sees that. Well, I think the record says that. Right. Well, yeah. yes. So when you talk about deep playoff runs, I think the Jags and the Dolphins are pretty much right there and on the same tier. But do you think if the Jags went to the AFC East, they would win it? I think they'd be cl- right in there, one or one game apart, okay. plus or minus. Well, first of all, I don't agree knows. with you on the Miami. I, I think the Jets are the favorite to win that to be. Yeah, if Aaron Rodgers healthy. I mean, I th- given health, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so uh, I think Miami, maybe, Miami and Buffalo to me are kind of, we'll see. I mean, Buffalo is so much better at the quarterback position, I think. So where does that leave Miami? Again, Miami lost a bunch of stuff now. They so uh, they have, they, they do, they're dangerous on offense. I get it. Um, I just I think the Jags are very much like Pittsburgh here, right? Like they're a team that could get in the playoffs, but right now, until we see more, until we see that, where well, they got to prove it again that they can make a run. Heck, they haven't proved it. 
since 2017 that they can really make a run. Um, Houston has to feel that way. I, I I think it's a little early, but at the same time, I don't know how you can't look at it that way. That they what they did last year, winning a playoff game, and now adding to their roster. See, they're a little bit different than the Jags in that regard. In fact, they're a lot of bit different. They're not standing pat and running it back. The Jags won the division, won a playoff game, and then ran it back, and it backfired. At least with the results. Mm-hmm. Houston is saying, "Hey." We ain't staying put here. We're going to add more. And so you got to give them a lot of credit for that. Chiefs' window's always open. The Chargers, who knows? Uh, The Raiders, definitely not. And uh, the Broncos, definitely not. So if you look at the AFC, I I think what we got to is the the Jets is open, the Ravens open, the Bengals open, Houston open, the Chiefs open. There's like five teams that are clearly open. I know we – and then there's like a – What's that? I think the Browns. I think the Browns and the Dolphins kind of are in, and maybe even a Steelers team are like, okay, you can make a case. I can make a case. We'll see. Um, so what's pretty wild about that conversation is I think the AFC is dangerous. I think there's a bunch of teams that are good, but I also think there's like a handful that can be at least right now crowned in the elite category that feel like every time they go out on the field, it's tough to pick against them. Correct. And, and there is some separation there. Uh, last year, I remember, I think I had it at 11 out of 16 teams I thought could win the Super Bowl. And then there are a couple of teams that are like iffy on. And then there are three teams like no chance. Mm-hmm. Like right now, as it sits, I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably about five teams I'd put decent money on to win a Super Bowl. I'd put probably another like seven teams in the mix to be in the playoff mix or you never know if things fall right. And then, I mean, how many teams are like no? The, the Raiders, uh, the Patriots, the Broncos, the Broncos and the Titans. I think the Chargers right now as a roster sits are a hard no. That's, that's a fair one too. Yep. So there'd be like five. So that's actually more than last year, at least going into the year uh, in, that, in that respect. But there's always that one team that could surprise you. Just like Houston did. Houston won three games. Well, like, no, Houston listen, was in that conversation. Nobody, You're right. Nobody <laughs> last year, once again, besides right. Casey Kearns, but nobody last year was saying, oh, I like Houston's chances. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, that, and that's, that's just the beauty of it. That's why like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, my gosh, look what Houston's doing. Uh, they're automatic. There's just nothing automatic about it. What's going to be pretty wild about the Buffalo situation is how many stories are going to come out about Diggs in Buffalo's situation, do you think, over the next couple weeks, couple months now, will we get a little more clarity of what the heck going on? Because keep in mind, this wasn't just a this year thing. Like, I know you bring up running the ball, and I know it exasperated again this year. But this has gone back for two or three years. Like, there's been multiple times that Josh Allen's had to come out and be like, we're all good. We're Mm -hmm. good. We're good. That is not just this past season. And so you do wonder how much is there. And, and now based off the dollars of this deal, what they gave up, this really felt like they're just getting, see ya. Get out of here. We don't care who you go to. Mm-hmm. That's an unusual thing. Yeah. And, and that tells me that stories are coming. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> stories are definitely But also coming. I think some, I mean, once again, I think Buffalo's got a plan in place. They almost have to, regardless of how bad it was with Stephon Diggs, regardless of what we haven't seen behind the scenes you can't justify letting go of your number one receiver for what was it again? A second round pick? Yeah, it's essentially a second round pick. For a second round pick without something. And when I say without something, I mean more than just a hope of a draft pick like that you get in the you know, with the wide receiver. So so uh Coach Ripley here in the chat. Here he's back trying to produce the show. Since Texans and Jags could easily be the number two seed in the AFC. Jets on paper are good. Can they stop Miami? Casey's deal until someone beats them. Uh, I think a lot of people would agree with that. The Ravens are the other team. He also said uh, about 25 minutes ago, Jags fans, it's real simple. The Jags have to push their cards, their money, and their draft picks to the middle of the table. Draft trade for a number one. Jefferson, Ayuk, Higgins, Harrison, Neighbors, Adunze. Find a way to add DB and defensive end. So I asked this question. Do the Jags need to push their chips in for their locker room and fan base? Or do they need to do it because that's the best strategy to win? To me, it's the best strategy to win. Yeah, I mean, like, listen, I don't think the the, the team really makes decisions based off of fan reactions. And that's why I included locker room. 
Okay. If if you're a, if you're the Jags locker room and you're seeing, wait, well, this comes back to Trevor, by the way. Yeah. Trevor, most importantly, representing the Jags. Oh, locker room. I'm done talking about him, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, I can't talk about Trevor Lawrence anymore now. I thought it was important. I guess not. <laughs> um, but does it show something? To, uh, look, you you can take us there like nobody can. There are some players that just wouldn't even pay attention to deals like this. They're like, yeah, we're fine. Whatever we worry about ourselves. Like, I, I got a feeling like all those offensive linemen aren't sitting there freaking out over Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that Diggs just went to Houston. But a guy like, I think, Kirk, who, who kind of is in tune with everything and maybe pays attention to it more often, he's like, well, hey. Look what they're doing. Um, where are we compared to them, right? Like, Listen, why wouldn't you ask that question? The Houston locker room now, they're excited, right? The, take, put the, the antics, the on-the-field things, some of the problems that comes with Stefan Diggs. C.J. Stroud, excited. Nico Collins, excited. Like That entire organization right now, they're excited because they know that they're getting another weapon for C.J. Stroud. Right, and they're going to be a better team, at least on paper. Now, once again, it all has to come into fruition. Who knows what's going to happen? Hindsight's twenty twenty. But I'm just saying today that locker room's excited, and yeah, obviously, like our our Jaguars players on Twitter right now reading all the reaction. Probably not. Maybe some are. Some are on vacation. Some, some are definitely doing, are. <laughs> some are doing their own thing. But they are taking note. You know, you are taking inventory. Like you're always taking inventory of of when a team brings a big player. Like when Eric Armstead got. You know, let go by the the 49ers and he comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, yeah, I think other teams in the division and then those locker rooms are taking note. So to answer your question, like, do you owe it for the city? Like, listen, never make a decision based off of, of fan reactions. And I know we have fun with it, right? I mean, we, we saw the clown movement a couple years ago and we wanted that. Obviously, Shad Khan stayed pat, stayed stuck to his guns, kept tr- Trent Balky. You're not going to make a decision based off of what the fan base, what Jaguars Twitter says. But you can kind of set a precedent to your team saying, hey, we're in this to win this as, as well. And once again, if, if you do bring in a, a big risk, like if you do get a T. Higgins or a Brandon Ayuk or uh, by the grace of God get Justin Jefferson, yeah, you are setting a precedent to your locker room saying, hey, we're in this to win this still. Like don't get it twisted. Yeah, I, I think um... – the reason I ask the question is because right now everybody would feel better if they did all these moves and just be like, oh, yeah, like we just countered. But is it always the best fo- sound football decision? I think those can be two different things. I, th- I think you can get emotional. Uh, I will say um, I- I'll always go back to the 2020 draft. I think it was a mistake by the Jags to chase the Jan and Ramsey stuff. Was that a good football decision? No, it wasn't. They got two players that were overdrafted highly and were big time busts because of the way they reacted. Uh, they they didn't even know it. I think they tried to talk themselves into the fact that these guys were two good players, but the subconscious, the reality was, if they really asked themselves years later, they were trying to replace the two guys that they were pissed off and left. Whether that's from a football standpoint or an emotional standpoint, somewhere in the mix, it got mus- muddied. And so I think you can get lost in the sauce a little bit, sometimes even from an evaluation standpoint. And I think sometimes the un... Popular opinion is the correct choice in sports, in building. And right now the popular choice would be to trade everything you have and go get a top flight wide receiver to counter the Houston Texans. Is that the most sound decision football-wise? And it might be, but I think it's worthy of the question. Like you got to be careful this time of year to get too emotional in every move that everybody's being made. What's going to make you the best football team going forward? Um and do the Jags make that move? Do they make the move that, that allows that? Maybe it's not Jefferson. Maybe it's Ayuk. Maybe it's not a current player. Maybe it's moving up in the draft. Maybe it is sitting pat at 17 because Brian Thomas is going to be the steal of the draft. I don't know. I think you know you can go many ways in the NFL in terms of how you construct a roster and how you go about things. I'm, I'm in it for more for the win-now mode because I feel like the win-now mode obviously it gives you the best chance to win at that time. But if you do have a culture and if you do have great coaching and great players in place, even having that win-now mode mentality and maybe you have to eventually reload, you can still have success. No one was more of the win-now mode than the Los Angeles Rams. Right? Yeah. How, mo- how many first-round draft picks did they give up? How many? I mean, it was crazy. And guess what? They won a Super Bowl because of it. 
And then what was the conversation? All right, well, they finally got won the Super Bowl. Eh, now let's see what happens, right? Now they're going to fall into mediocrity because there is no way they can sustain their success. And you know what? That first year when they went 5-12 and 12 after that Super Bowl win, yep, everyone was calling for McVay's job. Everyone was saying, oh, here we go. We've seen this show before. You invested all up front, and now you're going to fall down. What happened last year? 10-7. and seven. Went to the playoffs. When nobody, including myself, Gave them a snowflake's chance in hell of doing anything with that roster. Oh, and by the way, Cooper Cup got hurt? Yeah, you're not doing anything. No, you went 10-7. and seven. So my point is is that, yeah, you, you sometimes it's cool to play for the win-now mode, but if you have a great coach, if you have a great culture in place, you can still sustain success after that. Yeah, uh, it uh, brings up a lot of questions. What a wild day in the NFL. What a wild day in the AFC South. And this stuff really impacts the Jags. Three weeks away from the NFL draft, how will it all play out? What will the Jags do inside that building to actually counter or really just simply, more importantly, make their team better uh, and, and a contender? I mean, this is, this is a time. like You can't just sit here and be okay. You've got to be good. You've got to be really good. And uh, even on paper, you're going to have to prove that you're good. But uh, the Jaguars uh, uh, need to make a couple more moves to improve their football team, and that's what the draft, uh, or maybe a trade or two, uh, could still be in play. Let's uh, take a time out here on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. You can find us at actionnewsjacks.com, Action News Jacks app as well. Just click video. 1 o'clock today, we have Cup Date with Stuart Weber for your NASCAR fans. 1.30, Olivia Tassily takes us through the week with Action Sports Jacks. And then at 2 o'clock, a live edition of No Gate Fees. And our question of the day in youth sports is, what about those guest players? Do you like them? Is it ridiculous? Is there a place for them? Flying in a kid from California to play the weekend tournament? That uh, will get you going, hopefully, on the youth sports front, plus some high school baseball, softball, uh, power poles, committed to the uncommitted. That show is at 2 o'clock on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. What started out as better people, better projects, just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting BetterExteriors.com. Better Exterior Solutions. Experience better. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. In March, Alive Credit Union was back for the sixth time as a sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event was over the weekend downtown. It was a good turnout with everyone taking steps for a good cause. And Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh emceed it. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at alivecu.coop. I'm Action News Jack's First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jack's This Morning Team helping you start your morning right. 
Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier Softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find Find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Community. That's who we serve. It's the people. Yes, yeah, the people. Demanding answers because the truth matters. When are you going to do the job? Listening and getting help to those who need it. I just appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. It's about telling stories from deep inside our neighborhoods, informing you, building connections, tracking storms. Serious storm situation, the kind of which we rarely see. Holding people accountable. You were getting at the truth. That's who we are. Action News Jax. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton. Easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf, too. Welcome back to the Brett and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. High score is still up 105,290. No one's come close to touching it. I haven't even played the game in about two weeks. Taking a little bit of a break, recalculating some things, recalibrating some things, and hoping to come in with a new strategy um, to try to take down Brent Martineau and his high score. By the way, I went to the eye doctor yesterday. That should only help me in my quest to beat my own high score. There we go. Um, I think so. What did the good doctor have to say? Um. Overall, not, not nothing new, really. So everything shake out pretty good. I, I'm just getting older and my eyes are getting worse. Did he, did they said you... that I should wear my glasses. Like They didn't say should, but you could wear your glasses more. Because right now I only wear them if I need to. Like, I, I, I'm reading now. If you need now. to see the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so, especially later at night. Like, get a little more tired later at night. And at home I'll wear them a lot, work on the computer even any time of day. But basically said when my glasses are on versus not, I'm like six lines different on the chart. Oh my god! Dang, that's pretty significant. That's drastic. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a big deal. So, so there's another thing. Um, that uh, so I had the whole test, like so you get your eyes dilated and stuff. Well, we had senior night last night. Mm-hmm. Well, by the time we go, I'm like still like. Oh, did you have that? Did you have the glasses? Well, no, I don't have like like. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, like like after you get your pupils the- dilated, they they give you like the the foldable glasses. No, nah, they didn't do that there. Oh, at least you got where are you robbed. going? Yeah, because you can't get light because it makes it worse. You have to wear like the blackout shades. I mean, maybe I, I don't even know what happens. Like I put this <laughs> these drops in. I don't know if that's a full, if that's a different thing. Like I really don't know. It's like my second time I've ever really gone to the eye doctors. And so Steph asked me these same questions. She's like, well, did you get dilate? Did they dilate your pupils? I'm like, I don't know. Like there were some like drops put in and I had to like, I had yellow stuff coming out of my eyes because of it. Okay, that's <laughs> not okay. Well, that's the yellow dye, like that you pat, like. Uh, it's, okay. okay. And, um, but I will say this: bottom line is, when you leave there, I'm a little surprised they let you drive home. 
That's the whole problem. Oh, yeah, the glasses. yeah, yeah. That's where you have to wear the glasses. Shades. You didn't wear the glasses. No. Were you, were you in some guy's garage during this eye exam? Where'd no, you go? It's like a major outfit. I didn't yeah, you, you have to wear glasses. Well, you, I mean, you, I you, did. You, I wore sunglasses. Okay, well, then, yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. You're, I thought you were saying like you didn't wear any kind of thing at all to help your eyes out. No, no, I had to wear the sunglasses. Okay, okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. But, by the t- but this was at like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Mm-hmm. By the time we get to senior night at like 6 o'clock, I still like him. Mm-hmm. In not great seeing, I didn't know it would linger that long. Or I didn't remember that from the last time. I go like once a year, so uh, so I had to go with the shades. Yeah, <laughs> on for senior hey, night too. Sun never sets on way, a bad. It ass. wasn't because I was crying. There yeah, was no yeah. Tears shed. Um, Did you get you, on the field? Yeah, we're on the field and everything. Did you get flowers? How does that work for you guys? Uh, Steph got flowers. Yeah. The, the parents do a nice job. What happens at our? I don't know if this happens all over the place, but jun- the junior moms and dads or parents kind of set it up for the seniors. So like last year, our parents did it, moms, okay. you know, for the seniors. And they do a great job with it. So nice. yeah, it was good. But senior night, you know, is done. Like Kaylee had her senior night on March 7th. It was almost like opening day. <laughs> now, Ty has it yesterday, which is April 2nd. But they're going to play. They will be playing into like late April, early May. So it's not at the end. And Yeah, usually it's at the end. Well, what like. happened was, it, I think this changed a lot. There's two. There's a couple of reasons. The pandemic really changed it, yeah. because when the kids lost their season, those seniors never got to celebrate. In fact, one of the things that we did on TV during the pandemic is we had people send in their senior pictures mm-hmm. from sports so we could recognize them, because they never. And I did think it was one of the cool things we were able to do during that time because the, the kids never got a senior night. Right. Now I think we can debate how important senior night is or not. I mean, it was. I mean, as a PO, I got an AB. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's what a senior night is but, for. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I saw you showcase. Did you, well, no, did no. Play well, BK we, last hey, night. We bring it's in the showcase. We bring in the 15th ranked team in the state for senior night. Yeah, no, like <laughs> no. That. You got, and I'm not going like to say that. who we played because I don't know how good they are now, and I don't want to. But we, you got to bring in the, the the difficult or you know the struggling bunch, okay? And then all the POs are getting ABs, and I'll say I freaking stung a ball of short, <laughs> put on a clinic. <laughs> And uh, kind of showed everybody up. Um, easy game, and uh, all the 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 hitters they might get an inning or two. I think there was a yes. I think there was a plan of potentially if things like really really worked out. I mean, if you host to, BK to get Ty a, an inning of pitching, maybe. <laughs> what was the score? Did y'all win? We ended up winning. Actually, it was a great win for us. Really good win, eight to three. Nice. Uh, BK's good, and but it was three three game in the sixth, and and then we pulled yes. away with five runs. But it's Ty's really not getting it. Uh, Carson, oh, we'll talk about it on no gate fees. He went four for four on senior night, which is really kind of cool. Not Hit a baby. home run. Um, but yeah, so, so it, it all worked out really well. But the bottom line is that's the other thing in baseball around here. You play a pretty good schedule, mm-hmm. so you don't have many of those options, Hamby, that you're talking about. Because the schedule now matters in max preps and everything. You're not putting a lot of cupcakey stuff on there. Um, and especially later in the year, you're building your schedule to get almost tougher and tougher right. as you go. And so it turns out like we have we seriously had the fifteenth ranked team in the state in on senior night. Yeah. It's like what are That's we doing wild. here? This is this might not turn out so well. Yeah. Um but it it actually did, and it was a really good win. But uh this, so the senior nights are are, are I guess kind of cool, but they are done earlier. In is really what I'm answering here because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing about the eye doctors, <laughs> back me up here, Austin. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. Is that it? Stylish. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I got those a couple times. Got to get an eye exam for every single fight. Those things do not fit me whatsoever. So I had to bring my own shades as well. I look ridiculous in those. You know, it's like I yeah I, I have not had those. Now maybe they would have offered them to me, but they didn't ask me if I had sunglasses either. Yeah. So. I don't know, but it is hard to see. I will say, you go out that door, you're like, whoa! It is. Uh, it's just a new experience for me because I seriously only have done this twice. Yeah. Whatever our next competition is, losers going to have to wear these for the whole show. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You, you know, also, the other thing about it, and this was great, but they put you in like a, what we call the bullpen while they're waiting to call you back after they do the initial test, like okay. any doctor's office or whatever, right? I mean, I'm just hanging out with a bunch of retired people. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, like we were. We had a whole sports show last night, yesterday, yeah. for about a half hour. Should have recorded. We're it. talking everything. We got to put it on the network. 
Senior Day Part <laughs> Two. <laughs> That's right. It was Senior Day before Senior Day, <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of fantastic. So, um, what you got? So um, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole during the break. Oh, really? And I went to get coffee. I, I kind of vowed that I never would give this guy a lot of attention again because it's so ridiculous of how his career ended. But Antonio Brown. How did I know? How did I? I was know? going here. Yeah. Well, because it's interesting stuff here. So in March, Antonio Brown with the CTE SPN network that he he like runs or whatever, he put out a couple players who he, you know we're gonna go to different teams. And this was in March, so this was three weeks ago now. Is this findable on Twitter or it's findable on Twitter? Like, yep. Is this like a hundred tweets ago? Uh, I mean, it's not a hundred tweets ago. It's okay. it's pretty you know whatever. Um, he had Stefan Diggs going to the Texans. That's wild. He had, and now because <laughs> most uh, trusted source at all. Well, and, and I know <laughs> Beckham now has met with this team a couple of days ago. He had Odell Beckham Jr. going to the Dolphins. Guess where he has Justin Jefferson going? Because there's there's three wide receivers here that he has going places. Hopefully, the I, I'm, I'm sorry. There's there's four. There's Brandon Ayuk going someplace new. There's Justin Jefferson going someplace new. Then he had Stephon Diggs, and he has Odell Beckham Jr. He has Brandon Ayuk possibly going to the Steelers. And if it's not going to be the Steelers, oh, I'm sorry, the Steelers are the only team that he reported on here. Justin Jefferson, the Steelers, or the Patriots? Hmm. Take that for how you want. I can't believe I'm breaking down <laughs> Antonio Brown <laughs> rumors and leaks. But the guy had it back early in like mid March that Stefan Diggs is going to the Texans. So, what take was it the context of it? He just put it out there in a he, jersey. He like, just literally put a picture of Stefan Diggs in a Texans jersey, and it, it, it said, "So it's the it's the the emoji soon." And then and then it's a popcorn. This is March seventeenth. <laughs> hey, you just wonder if he heard something or if it was just a pure guess or what. But then once again, I just said Odell Beckham Jr. is talking to the Dolphins as well. Yeah. I mean, listen, these guys all might talk still. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. You know, I mean, how much say do you think a guy like uh, Diggs has in this, too? It's like, hey, I'd like to go to Houston or wherever. Like, I don't think they give him that kind of respect like they did Keenan Allen. No, right? no. I mean, once, once again. We'll they, send you to Siberia. I'm, I'm pretty sure they left on bad terms. They used to but... send people to Buffalo, actually, if you didn't like. like that was the whole Ramsey thing. It was like, send them to Buffalo. Yeah. yeah. In hindsight, if they did, they would have won a Super Bowl, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe it's just a coincidence, but the fact that he called Diggs going to Houston and then once again, Odell Beckham Jr. a few days ago met with the Miami Dolphins, I don't know. Maybe you know something that we don't. Uh, this uh, person on social media just said, Jags were 15th in scoring last year with a horrible press Taylor. Are returning an injured Kirk coming off surgery? Gabe Davis, 700 yards, replaces Ridley's 1,000. Sheriff and Morris, another year older. How does Bulky keep getting away with destroying the franchise? <laughs> Mm. Jags fans aren't pessimistic. I don't know if this guy's a Jags fan or a gal or whatever, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that's the way to look at. It. I mean, more. Guess what? Everybody gets another year older. Mm. I mean, okay. So if you're doing that, then why wouldn't you say the same about Stefan Diggs getting older? He's like going to be 31, mm -hmm. right? So if we're going to talk about age, so that crosses it out. I think the Press Taylor thing, if you think he's horrible, is an easy fix. Hello, Doug Peterson. And Jags were actually 15th in scoring last year. Felt worse. Yeah. Felt a lot worse. Didn't what it? are we in 2022 then? Uh, our... At 24.9 a game, I want to say you were like eighth. All right, here's – I haven't really thought this through, but it just came to mind. Okay. So 2022, the Jags eighth offense or around there. Okay. We go and add a big wide receiver. I'm not going to say a wide receiver one, but we added a bigger receiver in Calvin Ridley. Now, Calvin Ridley and Stephon Diggs, they're not co comparable at all because of anything, really. No. But you added a big well, actually receiver. Actually, comparable route runners. But they were both big receivers. They were both big gets, okay? And then the Jags' offense takes a step back, okay? Obviously, Trevor's hurt. Kirk's hurt. Zay Jones misses time. But it was almost this... It's another mouth to feed in a tough offense that already was good. Maybe the, je the optimist in me is almost hoping that Diggs going to t the Houston is another mouth to feed in what was already a good offense. Are there going to be weird dynamics 
with how do they spread the ball to all these guys? We almost saw that in the first couple of weeks. In, and that's why everybody was saying in, before week one of the 2023 season, everybody was saying, hey, pump the brakes on Ridley a little bit because it's going to take time to see how he fits in this offense. And that's exactly what happened. And he only really took off stats-wise once Kirk was out. So hopefully, possibly, could that translate in Houston where Diggs doesn't necessarily fit all that well with Dell, with Nico Collins, with Noah Brown, with Dalton Schultz. I think it's an interesting point to bring up. Again, I, I think not everything, there's a lot of good about this. There's a lot of reason to get excited about this. So I don't want to dismiss that. But I do think there are also some you know, potential red flags. Like if you look at where it could go wrong, you look around the whole story, there are places that this could go wrong. And I think your, your point's a good one. You can have sometimes too many mouths to feed. Now, is that why things went... I think the Jags, I don't think the Jags had trouble feeding people. I think the problem was Zay Jones got hurt, right? And then later in the year, Christian Kirk got hurt. And then there were just some times where they were off, they, they weren't on the same page more because of the new offense. So I think that lends to it. Now, what you add in here is a guy that has, over his career, he gets a little pissed off if you're not throwing him the football. So, yeah, could you have that dynamic? Could it brew a little bit? Maybe. But I think the biggest thing is until somebody stops this Slovak offense and throwing the deep ball and the ability for Stroud to do it and these guys to get there, I think somebody's going to have to showcase that they've got an answer for that. Because I'm still stunned that last year nobody could find an answer for that the entire season. Whatever the answer is, cover two, is it what? Whatever it is. Why can't people find the answer? And until that happens, I think they're going to be deadly anyway because you're not just talking about feeding receivers like the Jags are trying to do it. Jags are trying to feed guys in, you know, in a 20-yard in box. These guys are trying to chuck it. They're playing backyard football, yeah. and, and all of these guys can go deep now and score. So I don't know Stephan, Stephon Diggs personally. I've had him in fantasy the past two years, so I've watched him closely. I mean, I mean something. He does. The problem with Stefan Diggs isn't going to be the targets. If they start losing, then he'll get upset because then he thinks that he can win the game if he gets the targets more. I go back to the Denver Broncos beating the Bills in Buffalo, and everybody wrote the, Denver, I mean, the Buffalo Bills out after that, and that's when it all went south. When the Broncos, the hapless Broncos and Russell Wilson go to Buffalo and at the time felt like a must-win game, they lose – and then that, to me, is where it all snowballed into Stefan Diggs being upset. Now, they go on a roll at the end, and they make the playoffs, and everything was fine. Stefan Diggs becomes Stefan Diggs when he doesn't win ball games. Now, if Houston, if you're, if an injury wants, I mean, I'm not going to wish injury to anybody. I'm not going to wish for CJ Stroud. I want him to play at his best possible um, you know, ceiling. But if something happens to CJ Stroud, something happens to that team, and they start losing, then yeah, it could be a house of cards, and it could all fall apart. But I don't think the lack of targets in terms of sharing them with Tank, sharing them with Nico, and keep in mind, Mixon's a pretty good receiving back out of the backfield as well. I don't think that's going to bother Stephon Diggs. If they don't win, that's when it's going to all collapse. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's a fair point, point. Um, and, and it could. And that could be the case for any team. I don't know if that's just a Diggs dynamic. It could be a lot of different teams. Heck, we saw it here a little bit. I mean, we, the dynamic over the last six weeks certainly changed uh, to some degree. But I also think it's a fair point to bring up, Hamby. I don't think that's a bad point about, hey, do you have too many? You can ask that question. Like, there is one football. And we did this last year a lot. We were asking those questions. We're mm -hmm. like, hey, who's getting the ball? You just had three guys coming off career years, and you're adding Calvin Ridley. And here's the other thing. The Jaguars and Calvin Ridley got fortunate because Ridley, if Kirk and Zay Jones don't get hurt, Ridley doesn't have a 1,000-yard season and eight touchdowns. He wasn't on pace for that. Kirk was on pace for that. And then Kirk was going to be their number one wide receiver this year. But you don't think if Zay Jones would have been healthy, that would have helped out um, Ridley a lot more? It might have because it, I, I will make the case that, that Evan Ingram's not catching 110 balls or 100 and whatever balls, right? So I – I, I just don't know. I mean, the way the season was going, Evan Ingram was tracking toward a major season. You're right about Zay, but Kirk was tracking toward an even better season than Ridley, and Ridley probably doesn't get to 1,000. He probably is more at like 880 or something like that, but a lot more targets go his way later in the year because of it. So, 
for whatever that's worth. I mean, I don't even know if it really matters. Uh, just a real quick uh, history lesson on the Jags offense in the last five, six years. 31st in the league in 2018. 26th in 19, 30th in 20, 32nd in 21. Doug comes in in their 10th. They go from 32nd to 10th. They increased almost a touchdown that year, uh, more than a touchdown, actually, at almost 24 points a game. And this year, they actually score a point and a half less a game and go down to 13th. So they're 10th and 13th in the NFL in scoring the last two years under Doug. And I think you do ask the question, there's going to be a lot of teams that you could factor into being top 10 in the league in scoring. Mm-hmm. The Jags got to find their way in the top 10 in scoring, right? I mean, the identity of this football team was supposed to be on offense, is supposed to be on offense. They have got to be able to score it better than 22 other teams in the National Football League, in my opinion. That's Correct. fair enough. Yes. So whatever you have to do to make that happen, what did they do? Well, they fortified the offensive line a little bit. They bring in Gabe Davis. That's about it right now. So they probably need to go get another weapon to be able to do that, especially losing Calvin Ridley. So um, I think, again, this does go back to some simplicity uh, when you boil right down to it. Uh, Let's take one more time out here on Brenton Austin Show. Here on a Wednesday, a lot going on in the football world. Uh, Did you see the numbers from the women's college basketball? If you didn't, we'll uh, showcase that at the end of the show. And uh, we'll catch you up on anything you might have missed, including the big news. Houston Texans get Stefan Diggs. How does that change the AFC South? And by the time we do a show tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we will be three weeks away from the draft. Watch this catch, Austin. Bam! How about that? Mandarin's a little Olivia web Anderson. gem. That's a heck of a catch. He also threw out a runner later in the game. That would be a double play. And by the way, that run does count. We'll talk about that more on No Gate Fees. I'll explain the rules of baseball or softball to you, Hamby. A little bit later on at 2 o'clock on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand. But if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and Mini, there's a car for every member of the family and the customer service is second to none. Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. 
It might look quiet, but that's just a chance to admire the facilities on the campus of the University of North Florida Ospreys. The stretch run has arrived in college sports, and for the Ospreys, that means the end of the beach volleyball season coming soon. And critical series for UNF softball and on the baseball diamond for the Ospreys team. Tennis is trying to peak in time for April's A-Sun tourney as well. The postseason in golf is on the horizon, and track and field has its busiest stretch of the season. For news, schedules, and results, just go to unfospreys.com. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part? They did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings Dot com today for your free quote. Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park. And now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room. A full bar and menu. My favorite sushi in town. And I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet. That's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid. You against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun. It's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice. It doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Welcome back to the Fred and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. So there are a lot of folks that I think when we mentioned just how big the women's basketball event Monday night was going to be, I don't think they believed it. And I think people morphed this conversation into men's basketball isn't as good as women's basketball. And like That wasn't the conversation. The conversation was the storylines are better. The storylines are intriguing. And the viewers are going to turn out. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many people I've had Say, I watched Caitlin Clark play the other night. I'm actually surprised. I, I'm, I'm stunned by how much it has resonated with people that I just know don't watch sports, watch basketball, and definitely don't watch women's basketball and would have any idea what's going on. I think the LSU stuff magnified it too, so I think they play a huge role here. But what was it, Hamby? End up being like 12 and a half million or something? 12.3. I mean, Man. just crazy record breaking, right? Like blown away. The biggest game of all time. I think I saw the biggest college basketball game ever viewed on ESPN. So when you asked yesterday, are we going to see it again? I would say no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, you need another Kate and Clark, and then you're going to need another team like LSU that's just. So polarizing how they go about their business. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't think we see it anytime soon, at least. By the way, Angel Reese declared for a WNBA draft day, so she's not coming back. She could, but she's not coming back. So here it is. Check that top percentage. All right, so six, uh, lead eight average 6.2 million viewers. Most watch lead eight on record. This is for the women? Yes. Up 184% year over year. Uh, yeah. And, and by the way, Caitlin Clark was playing last year in some of these too. They that's, also got the network so love with the ABC stuff, so like that helped. Um, but again, you're you're very comparable to the men. Yeah. And I would also say this about the men's. I I what did I see? I think I saw something recently, like the men's college basketball lead eight. 
did better than any like NBA Finals game of the last handful of years or something like that, which goes back to our conversation I think we had at the start of the tournament. It's such an interesting event because you could play a game on Saturday afternoon and you could take the two best teams in the country and you might draw like two and a half million viewers around the country. But in this tournament, in March, it blows it up like five, six, seven, tenfold. Yeah. Which, doesn't that surprise you? Like that much? I mean, not really, Brent, just because like it's all or nothing. It's winner go home. You know, like it's like it's like a game seven NBA play in an NFL NBA 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 finals. It's just like it means that much more. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Like, I don't even know if the um I wonder if even the Clark and everything else is now impacting even the men's basketball a little bit. Like it's got you thinking yeah. basketball more. I mean, it's definitely in the conversation. Like, it's gets brought up a lot. I mean, it, it's a very well possibility. Like, I'm very curious to see what Iowa and UConn is going to look like because, you know, I'm a sucker for storylines. And Paige Buckets was supposed to be the Caitlin Clark before she got hurt a couple years ago. And now Caitlin Clark's taking on UConn. So, like, Caitlin and Paige, that's – it's That's going to be good. TV. Yeah, I, I think we're going to continue the trend. Now, do we get that high? I think this was a little bit of a different animal. I, th- I think we see 10 million. You want to think, think we'll have 10 million? I say we, like, I have anything to do with this at all. I'm going to take under 10 million. Okay. I'll say I- over. Ah, oh, but it's WrestleMania, though. <laughs> Isn't it? When, when do they play? Do we know what time they play at? I don't know. It's Friday, Sunday. It's Friday. The- so Friday won't what we- time? Okay. Yeah, well, we get done. It's got to be Friday at 7 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take over ten million. Let's go. You don't think so? <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't think Paige Buckets brings that kind? Of, I mean, UConn had six point seven million against USC. I can't name one USC player. Yeah, uh, you might be right. I'll go under just for the heck of it. Okay. But I, you might be right. It's yeah. gonna be close. All right, uh, that will do it. We got one o'clock uh, cup date coming up with uh, Stuart Weber. Uh, week with Action Sports Shacks uh, with Olivia Tassley at one thirty and two o'clock. No gate fees. The big news today: Stefan Diggs traded to Houston. Your move, Jaguars. We move. <laughs> Where are we moving? I don't mean, like, geographically either. (laughs) We'll do it again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Have a good Wednesday, everybody.